Welcome to Thursday night's Gab and Doodle from me. And we're going to have a special guest. Why did my screen just go dark over there? That's weird. Um, let me switch this to live real quick. Now, for those... Come on, click. There we go. Uh, for those that have not noticed, um, and I'm sure you're all going to notice, and it's going to be amazing, um, but I have just added something special to my Gavin Doodles. If you look behind me, you'll see you don't see my junky studio anymore. You see my golden curtain. It's pretty awesome. I got a golden curtain behind me. Uh, it's shiny and it's 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 got a little uh, a pizzazzy sparkle to it, but look at that thing. Whoa. So now you don't have to see everything that's in the background of my world, and you can actually be excited by what's here. Um, so uh, I'm going to let our, our special guest in in just a second, but uh, I want to tell you a little bit uh, real quick before I forget. Uh, one of the things that's happened over the last, um, I'm going to say a couple weeks-ish, <laughs> I don't know why I said that's so weird, but uh, within the last couple weeks is I've started to upload um, all of these immediately afterwards to, well, not immediately afterwards, that sounds like I do it instantaneously, within a day or so. Uh, <laughs> hello, Jennifer, I'll, I'll, be, I'll let you in one second. Uh, within a day or so, uh, I upload these to YouTube. I had so many people request uh, that they be documented outside of um, the uh, Instagram so people could pause and reverse and do all the things that they want to do. Um, and so I will um, uh, I will post this probably tomorrow or Saturday. Um, so if you have, haven't seen it uh, yet on here, maybe that's an easier way. But um, okay, so... I'm going to let in our special guest, but first I'm just going to add the Ask Us Anything, and then we'll go from there. Ask Us Anything. Bop, bop. Let me add a little couple here. Uh, okay. And I see some, a DN117 is already asking a question, which is uh, with uh, in reference to the domestica class that I taught about... Um, what materials did Rebecca Green use? Uh, she uses acrylic gouache. Whole, uh, I believe it's uh, Holbein's acrylic gouache. Uh, she has her own set of colors, just so you have reference, uh, because I didn't say that in the video, which I probably should have. So let me let our special guest in for the night, which is Jennifer M. Potter. Invite. Ooh, now we wait. And Jennifer has joined. Hello. Can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yes. Good, good. Okay. Absolutely. Right. It was just that I think the audio took a second on my end to kick in. Um, so for those that don't know, um, we have our wonderful guest of Jennifer M. Potter. Do you go by, do you go by Jennifer M. Potter outside of web and, and sort of promotion? Or is it for like... No, that would be a mouthful. <laughs> oh, okay. No. What what do you what do you go by normally? Uh, I introduce I introduce myself as Jennifer, but I will answer to anything beginning with the J, basically. Yeah. <laughs> I just I'm so like I figure there's probably some other Jennifer Potter out there, and that's why you put the M in there. Mm -hmm. And so like I'm I, I'm very careful. I don't want to sell it like short and have someone go to some other. Is it? Have you looked up who the other Jennifer Potter is that uh, has there, stuff? There, there's definitely an artist. There is a writer. Actually, there is a Jennifer M. Potter who has self-published picture books. I, I saw these on Amazon, and I think they're listed under my author profile. And I'm like, that's not me. I got I got a couple of those, a couple of Mark Hoffmans that are out there that all of a sudden show up. My what about surfing or something of the sort? I'm like, I am not a surfer. I know Why of my any parents sort. Parents have named me Sigourney or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, thank you for joining me tonight. Um, I. I for those that don't know, you've done books like uh, we have That's Betty here, uh, which I have questions about because trying to capture Betty White in all her uh, glory, you did an amazing job of like the whole the whole Golden Girl, uh, the yeah. clan, mm -hmm. 
their uh <laughs> the likenesses of like the b arthur's glare in her little in her eyes is so good and mm -hmm. rue uh mcclanahan sort of like uh she's got like half lids but kind of in a like sultry way that you got in there that's really good <laughs> i don't know not sultry that sounds weird um but it's well that, that was her character yes yes that's mm -hmm. why i put it that's why i put it in there mm -hmm. and then stuff like claude oh my uh and i have my goodness oh my god i have uh i have questions about the claude one in particular that like it's this is my nightmare book uh oh uh oh <laughs> you got uh dueling books here mm -hmm. um the Claude book I was gonna say is my nightmare, and you want to know why it's my nightmare? Oh, why? This, this is a weird one. Um, trying to maintain a white figure and keep it nice and clean in all, all of your work, mm -hmm. like this one. This one I don't think said what it was done with medium wise, but I'm digital. chalking it up to probably is it digital? Mm -hmm. Okay, well that makes okay. it a lot easier. A lot easier. I just, just anytime I have to have like something pure white, like you know, a snowbank or something of the sort, I'm like, oh, it's mm -hmm. so hard to put white in there and make it like really pop and shine, especially if you're working with traditional materials. It just gets dirty. I edit over time. everything. <laughs> yeah. I, I've, I've been working in traditional materials a lot lately, and but I still finish everything in digital. Digital, yeah. Mm -hmm. I try to go in and like adjust the values and get the whites to be like as bright as I can, but it's never. Mm -hmm. It's never, and I always have like something, Weird, a, yeah. a white page sitting on a white background. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why do I do that to myself? <laughs> so yeah. I saw that and I was instantly like, oh, what a terrible nightmare for me to have to paint a character that's white all the time. Um, so anyways, thank you. I, I like already jumped in. Um, thank you for joining us tonight and, and sort of uh, jumping into this uh, chaos that is Gab and Doodle. Um, for those that don't know you, would you give a little brief introduction? about yourself um yeah uh <laughs> on the spot here uh i'm jennifer and potter as introduced i have done um i do mostly picture books but also editorial books and mm -hmm. reading cards and you can kind of see a little bit over here but the collection there yeah um and i think the most interesting thing i did is i designed life-sized characters for a mall in hong kong um that was cool. It was just like okay. animals that kids could come up and hug, and what, it was it was what, so fun to see. What were they made out of? Um, they were they were uh, I don't think it's technically three D printed, but they were machine made. They were they were drilled out of like I think styrofoam or something, and then <laughs> coated with different things. And I. So they're, they're like hard plastic or something of yeah. the sort in the end. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then some of them were flocked. They had like wool on, uh, like sweaters and stuff. Huh. Um, yeah, basically I designed the characters. I did um, front views and side views and some of them were interacting and stuff. And then the advertising agency who had hired me went to a 3D printing company and they made like little models of it. And then from there, right. once they were approved, they made these Scaled it six up. foot things. Yeah, yeah. it was, was this cool. Was this when you were a design, like doing uh, design work or was this a uh, illustration gig? Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you haven't seen them full scale in person, I assume. No, uh, <laughs> I was really hoping to go, but it just didn't work out time wise. Yeah, so. that's a, that, I mean, that's kind of a haul to go over there just to see those and then come back. <laughs> yeah, and there were a lot of um, protests at the time. And if I remember right, most of the malls had canceled their holiday decor oh, no. for the season, but that one didn't. So oh, I did okay. get to see pictures and I get to see kids like interacting oh, with them and it was really sweet. Very cute. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, you have a background in, in design for i forget I, I was reading uh, again to make sure i brushed up on it but for for quite some time and then have moved on to sort of the illustration and the kidlet side um and how how long ago did you make that sort of lean towards the kidlet um 2017 i think 20 yeah i think, tw I think okay. 2017 might be that, around there that, yeah that perfect timing right before the pandemic or yeah <laughs> make that switch yeah. yeah it definitely got weird once the pandemic hit <laughs> yeah. 
Did you did you already have a book at that point? I I, I haven't even looked at the dates to be able to, to double check, but did you already have a book at that point? Or was that yeah. sort of a, a leap um, before stuff rolled in? Claude came out. Um I'd had I'd had a couple of books by then. Okay. Um I think yeah. I'm trying to I know Claude had come out and I can't remember if Voices of Justice had come out. I think it might have. That's Betty, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. But that's that's so, so you already had done a couple of things before that transition of like let me focus more on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's always like that tricky of like I didn't jump into Kid Lit proper until after I had a book. Okay. And it was like, oh, really? it's, it's similar. Like I had a, you know, I had done a book and then it became a question of like, is this something I want to put more time and effort into besides editorial and things of that sort? I misunderstood the question. I thought, yeah, I misunderstood the question. I, I jumped into Kid Look be Lit before I had my first book. I thought you were asking if I had a book before the pandemic. Oh, no, no, no. I, I was, yeah, I was wondering about sort of like, yeah, the transition of jumping from like one field of, mm -hmm. you know, say design. Mm -hmm to something like kid lit whether there was something that was the impetus or something that was the like the push the shove that made you go oh this is this is time to shift to that and sometimes for people it's like well they get a book gig and they're like oh this is fun and that makes it exciting and they jump or some people go hey i really need to make this transition i hope it works out <laughs> and that could be I, a I, was, too. I was starting in um i was trying to do a web comic not a not a funny comic but an actual like graphic novel that is posting online and I think I got a hundred pages in and realized that was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so kid lit for me was scaling way back from my yep. really like um big ideas. Gotcha. Yeah. Thirty two images instead of thirty two hundred images mm -hmm. <laughs> or whatever it may yeah. be. Is a I mean obviously like you, you tone down what you're doing for a graphic novel, but it's still it's a bunch of illustrations per page. I did it. Uh, That's probably the problem. <laughs> yeah. I, I've, I've tempted the idea in my head many times, and I just don't know if I, like, I love the idea of doing that, something in that sort of medium, mm -hmm. but I just don't know if I have the follow through. Like mentally, I think like two pages in, I'm going to start to go, uh oh, this is a bad idea. Yeah. I got, you know, 200 more to go and bad idea at that point and I, I I'm hesitant so it was a great ex experiment I learned a lot you know I mean doing a book doing a kid's book you have to draw the same character on many pages and different angles and stuff and with a comic book you do that several times in one page yep. so it is a crash yeah. course uh, <laughs> you know like even I, th I think in that time I also did do a short story that I ended up being about 30 pages, like a 30 page graphic novel. And, you know, it, it's, it's worth doing. Yeah, Some of that stuff is stuff I'm particularly proud of, but I learned so much. And if I had, if I went back and attempted it now, it would probably go a lot better more smoothly. Yeah, but man, that's, I can understand that's a lot of work. <laughs> I get that. I mean, I even factor in like the equivalent of, you know, in each spread in a picture book, you have to compose the page, right. Mm -hmm. And so like, you have to understand that. And then you flip the page and you have a new composition to be able to play with. But in that, in that idea of comics or graphic novel, not only is each panel its own composition, but then how it relates to a panel that's visually right there next to it too. It's like, that's it's just sort of mind blowing that people can do that on a regular basis. Um, okay, so real quick, uh, before we jump in, cause I'm gonna have questions and we're gonna talk and we're gonna, we can talk all sorts of things. I'm gonna ask you, about sort of uh, some silly questions and some normal questions and some life questions and some business questions, et cetera. But um, will you do me a favor and tell me what you're working with tonight? Um, I am working traditional. Okay. And I am mostly working with, this is mostly what I work with in general, um, Karen Bosch Super Color Pencils. Okay. They're watercolor pencils. So I've got that and I've got my handy watercolor brush, pencil sharpener. And then I also, <coughs> depending on how far I get, I might bust out the pen pastels. And I think I've got the pencil for sketching. <laughs> and the paint at all? Or is it the, the watercolor pencil to make the paint? Mm -hmm. I make the paint okay. with a watercolor pencil. Gotcha. Is that what is that what you do normally? Like the Betty White one I thought was in uh that was that was actually acrylic gouache and okay. pencil. There's there no normal. There you go. 
formal, but yeah. I've been working with this <laughs> for a little while. I feel like the, the arsenal of like any illustrator in the last 10 years is like acrylic gouache, pan pastels and colored pencils that's doing traditional stuff for the most mm -hmm. part. Like you don't hear as many people going, you know what I love to do is oils or, or, yeah. or the, uh, or like even it. pure acrylic. Tanya, uh, I mean, you, I think, you know, you, you interviewed yeah. Tanya recently. I know she does, um, she does oil crayons. Yeah. She's it's rare to find that though. Like, mm -hmm. I, I feel like that's, maybe it's just, there's a plethora more of, uh, uh, companies that provide, you know, the, the acrylic based gouache or things of the sort that it just becomes easier. I mean, I grew up on acrylic, uh, and now I do acrylic gouache mm -hmm. just because I can color pencil on top of it. And like, that is like a, a go-to for a lot of people. Um, okay. So outside of that, what are we going to be making tonight? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I pulled up a picture of, um, of a cat that I took in, uh, Istanbul as a possible reference. Okay. But I don't know. I, I was a little fried by the time it came by the point it came time to pick out what I was going to draw today. I don't know. I, so, I we'll came see. up with an idea 10 minutes before we started. There you go. So I'm in the same, I'm in the same ballpark. I don't know where it's going to go. Um, I, my wife said she thought something book related and either that or someone in a wheelchair for representation purposes. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I have this idea and I don't, I'm not going to do this one, but it was, a little kid in a wheelchair pulling a whole bookcase behind him. So he checked out the whole bookcase from the library. Um, <laughs> but the scale is a little funky. But then we, uh, this one became the, the idea of a little kid, a fort. And so they have a little bed fort and the older brother is reading to a younger brother and little like snuggling and whatnot. Mainly because I just want to work with darker colors tonight. That's the only reason. Um, I had, I did a picture for um, the Sun Tribune, Sun Star Tribune, the Star Tribune, um, and in Minnesota. Yeah. Okay. And I did two, um, I did two versions, and one was kids in a tent telling stories with the flashlights, and they didn't go with that one, and I still kind of want to finish it at some point. Yeah, I just the uh, <laughs> someone says the kid with the bookcase. Maybe I'll do the bookcase at some point, or. Um, I mean, it is kind of funny, but I, the, the fact that it's profile, I feel like the last piece I did was kind of like very profile, like straight on shot. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to add uh, the compositionally, I'm going to try something different tonight, but I, maybe I'll hold on to that and do that next week of some sort. Um, and so feel free to make whatever you want. I know you mentioned that uh, I was looking through your website and it said something about you didn't have a dog. I do. And but oh now gosh, you do. I do now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I need to update it. <laughs> yeah. It was one page said you didn't, and then one said you did. And I was like, mm. oh, I bet you're, because it said you really love dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, I wonder if there's going to be a dog tonight. Uh, I almost did a dog. I thought about doing a dog. I thought about doing angry kids, because I just think it would be fun to draw. But, you know, like emotion. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. Do people want to look at art of angry kids? <laughs> well, it, it all depends on how you do the anger. Mm -hmm. And like, like anger can be a silly sort of concept. Sorry, I have a cat here that's making noise in the background. Um, there, there's ways to manage it, but it is like, I always feel like, yeah, how can I do someone frowning in a piece? Mm -hmm. And it, it just always feels like, no, it's gotta be lighthearted. And so I, if you look at my portfolio, there's like, rarely do you ever see someone upset of any yeah. sort in those pieces, just cause I love the like, try to go happy with everything um so why don't we set up kids doing a meltdown and have it be funny but then yeah. the story why is he angry you know how, what do i you know, well, it gets complicated my wife just my wife just got me for valentine's day the uh pepper and me book that's mm -hmm. the the beatrice uh all um Alemania? Mania. there you go yeah about the scab mm -hmm. and how she's yeah, like sad right. when she and there's like all sorts of sad faces and like she's upset with it and like the whole book is built around that idea but like it's so funny because it's a scab that she's upset with so mm -hmm. um uh so why don't we switch to our our down shoots or however you're however you're setting up your camera for the night yeah um all you right. said you were all set up i even see like yeah you have a rig up above oh, yeah. you don't you I'm you have, trying to be really professional here yeah it's like a boom mic coming into the shot there yeah a little tiny guy 
Um, so let's set that up and we can just talk and we can, wherever the conversation goes, uh, if people want to chat in the comments, then uh, we're more than happy to try to answer okay. accordingly. Um, why is that block there? Um, so as we're, as we're setting up, I'm going to throw a couple of questions your way. Uh, and the, uh, the, the questions I have right now, like, there's big questions we can talk about sort of the, the career and how you came to do what you do. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to know uh, right off the bat, because I always ask, like, I don't know if you watched last week's, but with Reggie, I started talking right away about like really heavy topics. And then I felt yeah. kind of like, oh, that was that was too much right off the bat. <laughs> um, so I'm going to start light tonight. And I'm going to ask, since it was Valentine's Day yesterday. Mm hmm. Did you celebrate? Yeah, my my husband and I went out to dinner. Okay. Yeah, and we left the dog at home, so she had a horrible Valentine's A horrible day. Valentine's Day? Yep, yep. Okay, and then the follow-up question is, if you could pick any Valentine's Day candy, or, or better yet, what would be on those little sweetheart candies? <laughs> Okay. What's your favorite thing that you've gotten on those in particular? Oh my god. You know, like you get the like, like you're cute and yeah. love you. I've seen some funny ones, but I don't really it's not uh that is not my candy of choice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's your candy of choice? Are you a chocolate person? Oh yeah. Oh, oh definitely. Okay. I cannot live what, without chocolate. Okay, what kind of what kind of chocolate are we talking? Um a uh, dark chocolate. I, I like to get as dark as possible, mostly so that I, I don't, know, don't go too crazy with chocolate sugar. Given okay. how much chocolate I go through. So, like, just a big tub of Baker's chocolate. <laughs> and you're, and you're good. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> my, my yeah, likes... like I mean, we're talking like eighty percent. Okay, yeah, that. that's yeah. that's it's some. Dark potentially bitter dark chocolate that's uh that is dense um mm -hmm. my wife likes dark chocolate i'm i'm okay with dark chocolate i, I was vegan for a while so that was all i could have at one mm -hmm. point and so i got used to it mm -hmm. but there are times where it goes too dark for me and i just like there's a, a guy at my work that has a secret chocolate drawer and they they bring in specialty chocolates and then they mark the like the the notes in them so like ooh this has an earthy note to it ah. just like you would with wine mm -hmm. and i tried some of it and i did not like most of what they offered because mm -hmm. it was just too much but um do you like your chocolate stuffed with things like caramel and stuff or is it are you a purist where you're um no i'm definitely not a purist but uh it's hard to get really dark chocolate with things in it i think uh so like almonds and sea salt is a is a favorite I see that from time to time. And did you get a did you get a thing of chocolates this Valentine's Day? Um, um no. I uh oh. <laughs> it's funny. Do we I do we love, need to get do we need to get your uh, your husband on here and Oh, I got pastries for my husband. He took me out to dinner. Okay. Nice. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, he did his part. <laughs> That's uh uh, last week I threw the the partner under the bus too, oh. the whole time. And so I'll try not to do that this time. And uh, I'm sure <laughs> your husband tr was very lovely with dinner. And maybe next year he'll get you chocolates. Um, <laughs> I like. <them. laughs> uh, so um, okay, we'll we'll shift back. I just want to start off with something more fun than just like tell me about your career. Sure. Um, sure. So now let's let's yeah. shift to that. Let's go to the tell me about, tell your, me career. about your career. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so obviously like shifting in 2017 towards Kidlit, but your, your background was on that sort of design side and, or at least that's my understanding. Um, yeah. Yeah. What, what does that mean when you say design? Cause like there's so many different types of design. Was it, you were doing graphic design specifically or was it other types of work that were sort of um, tangential? No, pretty much graphic design. Marty going off on this picture. <laughs> Erase the cat, erase the cat. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I did, um, yeah, I did graphic design. I have done a lot of book design for American Library Association and the EPA. I did quite a bit for them. I've done a lot of um, tech design 
trying to because I lived in San Francisco for a while and and basically if you're there you're going to be doing some yeah. tech <laughs> and design. so you know I designed apps and websites and things like that so are are you a, a and I don't mean to categorize designers but are you a type designer or are you a graphic design like are you a typography person or are you much more into sort of like uh design of shape and color and things of that sort uh i would probably say i'm a jack of all trades okay because you know with, with books it's all type yeah but i did you know I've, i don't know i've done everything i guess <laughs> so does that does that weigh into your sort of making at this point in the sense of like when you're working on these books uh obviously like being a designer you're probably going to design and I, and I look at the pages like even the the Betty White book in particular there's a lot of sort of uh vignettes and compositions of like where the where the images are placed uh are very distinct so it's not just like let me put something in the center of the page all the time but um do you do you try to play designer in that role more so or do you try to let that be up to the um the publisher in that case. I don't think I've ever been in a situation in which it's been up to the publisher. I mean, usually I just, they'll give me a script and I'll, I'll run with it, a manuscript and I'll run with it. And then, you know, there's changes. Like the, I did a lot for Betty White that didn't make it into the final, for example. Yeah. Um, because, you know, I, I don't know, I really enjoy research too. And so all of these, things about her life we're talking about the different shows she was in so i was doing full sets oh my god this yeah. is ridiculous the the reference picture is equally ridiculous i need you all to know this and i'm trying to capture the most ridiculous oh. expression on oh. the smiling cat. of the cat okay and i'm just going to noodle around on it okay. i thought you meant the reference picture of betty white's sets and i'm like what, no, no, what no. do you mean by that for ridiculous no no um oh, sorry that was um Betty White sets were um, just a lot of, of like watching TV shows and then taking screenshots of this angle and that angle and stuff. So there's a lot of work to not make it into the book, but that's, that's you know, it was a fun experience learning it. And now, you know, I'll go back through the stuff and be like, oh, that was really cool. Like, you know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll do that set sometime. You know, yeah. art doesn't. The art doesn't go away. It's still there, you know. Now, did you know, uh, not did you know Betty White before? <laughs> but did you, did you know a lot of her work beforehand? Like, obviously, a lot of people of, of sort of our generations are all like, oh, Golden Girls. And we immediately latch on to that. But she's been around for, uh, or or was around. I think she she passed, right? Yeah, actually. Yeah. She okay. passed right before the book came okay. out. Okay. Um, um, but she, she did all sorts of other shows and had a, a very long history prior to doing, you know, uh, what was her name on Rose? Rose. Is that her name? Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so did you, did you watch a lot of that stuff or was that something that you had to do, I was, you know, prior to working on the book? I, you know, I, I mostly knew her from Golden Girl. Yeah. And there were, there were some things for sure uh that i had seen besides that but they weren't stuff that was really in my um i don't know my psyche in the way <laughs> that uh that golden girls was yeah i mean i know she was on all sorts of shows prior like uh oh, oh. she had two the betty white shows two yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that, that's how extraordinary she is that that's her career you know she has two shows just named after her and she was she was known as like it's funny because in the golden girls she was sort of played a part of like an idiot right. uh right. or or a a uh lighter mentality <laughs> than, than the other folks i'm <laughs> trying to figure out how to say it uh, tactfully here but yeah. she also like was known as like a really witty biting comedian yeah uh, outside I mean, of that and so like for people that don't know or people didn't, didn't grow up with anything other than the the uh, Golden Girls, potentially they don't know how like experienced and uh, groundbreaking she potentially was mm -hmm. for sort of women in comedy. Um, yeah. So 
Tell me, compassionate figure. Yeah. I know that that's the that's one thing that does come across in that book mm -hmm. is some of the like the um not just the like entertainment side but the her ability to be a just humble and wonderful person um and it you know in a way i'm so well not just in a way i am jealous that you got to work on a book like that because to me those are like i've been dying to work on a book about um sort of a a biography of someone really important to comedy mm. and i at one point i pitched to my agent and I, and I understand her sentiment on this when i when i pitched it but i pitched the idea of like oh i would love to do something like the carol burnett show or oh, something right. of the sort and then the the argument came up which is it'd probably sell better if it was written by uh, a woman than a man trying to explain the power of mm -hmm. a woman in comedy that had just you know that that had created such a pathway for other women in the industry and i totally get that but i'm like oh seeing that you got to work on the betty white one when i first saw that i was like oh man that would have been a good one right there like <laughs> yeah. what a great name to work with I um I, I definitely have an idea for a book that i think would be good and i'm just like i can't write this it's not my story you know yeah it's <laughs> gotta, gotta I, go give it to somebody else <laughs> and it's 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 i mean i i don't want to be the person who's like well i'm gonna tell it because it's I have this great idea it's more so like it really is about like empowering other people to tell the story that's more representative of of their background or their history and mm -hmm. it, it would be a false sort of uh a false history coming from me in those situations or it wouldn't it wouldn't sell or have the same impact that just mm -hmm. having a you know someone who has experienced some of the trials and tribulations that uh that these artists or comedians or what have you uh had to go through so tell me a little bit about sort of the experience of, of working on that I'm, I'm jumping on that one in particular right now but there's there's plenty of other questions but um about the likenesses because i've i've worked on something with uh i worked on a darwin book and there had to be some accuracy in my style but my style is much more sort of like cartoony than what you do mm -hmm. uh, not that yours isn't cartoony in some way but yours is more on the realism side compared to yeah. mine yeah. And on top of that, that person is current dealing with Darwin. He's no oh, longer yeah, around was, to sit there and go, <laughs> yeah, hey, that doesn't look like yeah. me. Mm -hmm. um, so was there was there conversations about sort of capturing her likeness or did she have any say in it um, because yeah, it was her likeness? I don't know. No, as far as I know, she did not because, you know, it's a educational i don't think they needed to no they didn't yeah or anything um i was brought on because i had just finished up a book with the same publisher henry holt um henry holt books for young readers yep and it was uh that was voices of justice and it has a ton of different um actual activists so yep. they they said oh well you know we know we need somebody who can draw people like the act it represents the actual people as they are and they would worked with me so they're like that might be a good book for jennifer and and the um the director at the time came up to me uh this was christian trimmer who has since moved on to mtv books he 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 said i you know i'd like to work with you again i have two books he's like i have a yoga book or a book about betty white <laughs> i was like how oh, is this a question <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I was honored to get that, um, to get asked that, but uh, yeah, it was no, no contest. <laughs> Did you, you didn't, you didn't propose doing both in one book at all? Just Betty White <laughs> doing yoga? Betty White does yoga. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I missed, I missed my opportunity, yeah. didn't I? That would, that, I mean, you hit two markets in one with that. You get yeah. the yoga people and you yeah. get the Betty White people. Betty people, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, there are names that like in particular the the world loves and she is one of those like it's like we've seen a few mr rogers books that have come out throughout the years uh you know i think um matthew cordell did one i'm trying to think of others there's there's quite a few of them that are out there um and it's like just a person that there's there's just not a way to like be angry at them for anything they've done in their life yeah. And Betty White sort of falls into that ballpark. Like, you'd have to be really uh, mentally unstable to go. I don't want to work on a Betty White book. Uh, 
Some even if people have though. What do you mean? Um, well, uh, one of the one of the parts of the book goes into how she. Uh, so she, I don't think you call it syndicated, maybe, but she was in L.A. doing her show. Oh, okay. Uh, this is the first Betty White show, and it was aired in the South. And she gave uh, airtime to uh, a black, black dancer, yep. a black singer and a performer, and they didn't like it. And they asked her not to, or, or to at least reduce his airtime. And so she gave him more. <laughs> and then they canceled her. And but she was she was willing to stake yeah. her career on what she thought was the right thing to do. And and we're talking about you know the late 50s so this is this is a bold time to be making those kind of choices and she did and that's amazing do you have um sort of obviously like working on that book i'm i know must have given you an appreciation for her in particular but did you have any heroes sort of prior or heroes now that are sort of like that same sort of inspiration or you look to that are um that you put on a pedestal like that oh gosh <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Um, I think I have a lot of different heroes for different reasons. You know, I'll have art heroes and then I'll have, uh, you know, story, you know, writers and people who are activists. I, I feel very, uh, a little on the spot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's hard to answer a questions. And draw. Yeah, I'm gonna throw you tough questions. I appreciate, I'm gonna, appreciate yeah. that. No, I'm, I'm here for it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, another tough question. Okay, if you had to choose between uh, your dog and chocolate, no, um, the uh, <laughs> <laughs> so just the uh, what was I gonna say? We've had the conversation on here with lots of people about sort of like who inspired them and sort of mm -hmm. who got them going, and clearly, um, you know, I. I am not the one to speak to this in any way, but I know that especially in an industry that, you know, entertainment and books and things of the sort, there's not always been the best representation right. that's out there. Yeah. And, you know, seeing someone like Betty White who did make those kind of moves, when you mentioned that it made me think of, there's a very famous, um, a very famous event that happened in, uh, oh shoot, what was it called? Circus of the Stars. Uh -huh. Remember, do you remember Circus of the Stars? Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, the name sounds really familiar, but it was it was the one where they had like it was a circus show that they would put on, and they'd bring in all these Hollywood stars, and like one of them would do the tightrope, and one of them would do yeah. uh, some sort of balancing act and whatnot. Uh, but there was one in particular where um, I can't remember what her name is. The smart one from Nine Hundred Two One Zero, Andrea. Oh, oh, right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, my wife's yeah. yelling. What's her real name? Gabrielle Terrace, where she uh, went and they told her not, she like hugged Alfonso Ribeiro at the end of a tightrope walk and they told her don't. And then she, she instead, like don't do it live on air. And instead she went up and kissed him on air. And it was like this, oh, like, you know, like challenging the system. And it's like such a small little thing, but like those kind of moments, it's like, I, for me, it's it's amazing to hear that but i know it's not the same for me because i haven't experienced sort of the challenge of like you know you're not allowed to do this mm -hmm. you're not allowed to speak your mind or to share your opinion in the same way um just because of background see i told you i get into these stupid serious topics <laughs> we started out with chocolate and now i'm talking yeah. about like racism on on television well, um I'll, I'll tell you one i'll tell you one that came to mind that's uh not quite quite on topic but also but you know about like doing what you're what you uh doing what you want to even though you're told not to um yeah. so elvis costello he, oh yes. yes yeah do you know about this is this the uh, SNL? SNL? yeah yeah okay you know about it but i guess i'll tell it for the people yeah, who no, don't. Tell, yeah tell it for people who don't know because it is a it is an interesting story yeah also. so he he wrote a song um radio radio that basically talks about advertisements and about how the radio is well it's the media it's just you know it's the media dictating what you get to listen to and it was a hit 
and he got invited to play on SNL as the musical guest, and they asked. Uh, NBC owned a lot of radio stations, and so they 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 said you can play anything, but don't play this. Yeah. And, you know, so he plays it. <laughs> and you know, in terms of heroes, I mean, he's, he's a talented artist. <laughs> are you are you a big Elvis Costello fan? Um, I am an Elvis Costello fan. I don't. Okay, and are you know. an are you an <laughs> Elvis fan? No, I guess I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> it's when I grew up when I heard Elvis Costello first of all like as a little kid you know I knew who Elvis was I didn't know who Elvis Costello was mm -hmm. and so then I hear him and I'm like he's got an interesting voice he had one of those voices that like you just don't know about at first like you either yeah. love it or hate it and at the time I was like I don't know <laughs> about this because he, he has like a bit of an um I don't know like back of the throat kind of knows uh sort of going with it and when i first heard him i was like ah this is not my thing and of course i was really little and now i love him to death i think he's amazing oh interesting um, yeah i got i got into him because of an, an ex i think his big sister had gotten him into elvis costello and then you know he was just sort of around and i didn't mind him but then i guess i started listening to the his albums more in earnest and he's he's a really good songwriter. Okay, what's favorite song then? Oh my gosh! gosh. <laughs> I told you I'm gonna put favorite you on the spot. Favorite song? Uh, I really like "Little Fool," "You Little Fool," "Beyond Belief." I really like Oliver's Army because, I mean, that's really I mean just just like Radio Radio goes, like, you know, goes out for the um, the media. Oliver's Army goes out for the military. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't pull any punches. Yeah. 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 I'm a, I, I will tell you, this is a, I have two songs <laughs> every day I write the book. Yeah. That's right. Which is a hit, but the one that gets me every time is Allison. Oh, well, see that, that was my ex's sister's name and I'm pretty sure that's why she got it. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah. I could, <laughs> yeah. I mean, anytime there's a song that has a name attached yeah. to it uh that i feel like that those are the like go-to songs where it's like you know mm -hmm. oh this is my song because it's got my name in it like right. i i even when i was uh when i was making the ad for the gavin doodle here mm -hmm. you i uh song i was named after. yeah what, what i forget which one did i choose was Jennifer it uh, Jennifer by donovan yeah yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and so like i always try to find like is there a name that goes or a song that goes with the name but there's of course like uh uh what is it jenny 857 uh, no eight what oh my gosh i know i know eight five seven wait no eight six seven five, five three, oh, nine. Three, oh, nine. Nine. i think that's it like, something like that there was there was at least i mean there's a, a de la soul song called jenny like there's so many songs named mm -hmm. jenny uh yeah. for various uh artists and i was like jenny from the block too didn't you <laughs> what i think you played jenny from the block one of too. one of them i might have i think i did the jenny from the block <laughs> And my wife for the story might have switched it to the the Donovan song. Okay, that's um, it. Yeah. I, it's it's also hard because I don't know what kind of music people are into, so I just kind of have to like, okay, what's what's a funny song to play, or is there sometimes it's like the title of the band relates. Um, but when I looked up Jennifer or Jenny, I got you know hundreds of songs to choose from, um, wow. and trying to find one, I was like Jenny from the Block, I think is is funny i don't know if that makes any sense for you at all i don't know if you are a jenny from the block <laughs> i was i was jenny for you know, my entire childhood up until i don't know i got older and sophisticated and then i became jen and then jennifer <laughs> <laughs> did you were you of the era wherein like ev there were lots of jennifers yes my parents said that they didn't know any they promised they did not know any jennifers and then all of a sudden they were everywhere just just a plague of jennifers there's that there's a, a website out there and i forget what it's called but it would it tracks like what the most popular names were across mm -hmm. the u.s mm -hmm. throughout the year so you can like scroll and see what it was in 1954 yeah. and what it was in 1963 yeah. and whatnot and it was all like mary 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 because of a lot of it started out like in the 50s and 60s because of religion so there was lots of mm. you know <clears throat> johns and lukes and things of that sort uh but jennifer all of a sudden takes over in like this like i think early 70s well, 
and apparently it was really popular in the 40s as well like it you know because things come in and out of fashion yeah it's but it's yeah. probably grand grandparents names yeah i bet you that's what i didn't know because i didn't have any grandparents named jennifer but <laughs> yeah it was also huge that's it was like jenny lind i remember my mm. grandmother telling me about who was some singer i think from back in her day <laughs> some some old timey uh yeah. do wop group that uh <laughs> that put together uh or uh sang into a tin can with uh you know some <laughs> some old like Hello, record honey. label Hello, yeah. Hello, yeah. Girl. <laughs> i mean it's the equivalent of like, like when I, I when i grew up like you don't see marks anymore in the same way that you did but when i grew up mark was a very popular name in those years and so like I had lots of marks that I went through school with and yeah. it sort of changed my perception of like the name for a long time. I didn't want to be called Mark because everybody was called Mark. Mm -hmm. um, and I can imagine the same thing with Jenny of just like, there's, there's just so many of that yeah. sort of ballpark. Did you, when, when you went to sort of, I'm going to transition this back to sort of art and thinking, cause I know that you mentioned uh, that you love sort of the, the design side and things of that sort. And when you get into branding, mm -hmm choosing names can be very very difficult oh, at best yeah. oh yeah I, <laughs> and, I, I care i care about branding yes <laughs> the, the, the designer in me is like oh branding even though i don't really use it as much for my own stuff i'm trying to more but it, when i do it for myself it feels horribly inauthentic but everybody else should do it because it's really worthwhile what <laughs> what do you mean that it doesn't feel authentic um, because I, I don't know, I, I think because I come from a bit of a marketing background, like when I did design for one of my jobs, I was under the VP of marketing and I learned a lot about marketing through him. And then uh, I worked with the uh, head of UX, so I learned a lot about user experience and, and, and it, it, it you know, this stuff is a little, I don't know, it's a little icky. Like, sometimes it, it feels like it's manipulative and it oh, okay. works. You know what I mean? So I know it works. I believe in it. But also, I feel a little weird about it. <laughs> well, are you talking marketing or are you talking branding when you say uh, that? Uh, it is the same thing. Oh, see, I think, it, uh, I guess maybe I'm thinking of a different terminology like the equivalent of marketing i think is about sales and things of the sort and i keep thinking of branding is just like what do you call yourself uh, yeah. i think it's i think they're really tied though because well i mean especially coming from the corporate world it's like your brand is how people feel about you it's um it's your it's what values you're conveying as a brand and these things can be really um really i mean i guess there can be altruism here for sure but you also have coke saying i'd like to teach the world to sing you yeah, know? yeah. It, it's and and even it, it, it's marketing sure it's a commercial but it's a market it's you know it's a commercial that is at some point um it, at some point it ties into the corporate brand and what the what they want to convey yeah. as who they are they want to convince you that they're humble and they're american and they're pure and exactly. whatnot exactly. And i get that i i just always think of like i guess when i think of branding i so much think of just like as an illustrator like oh do you make sure your packaging and your you know or your letterhead looks nice on everything and i i maybe it's not as nefarious in my mind <laughs> um <laughs> but i under i understand the sentiment too though of like there is a manipulation factor that goes with it that you're you're sort of challenging people or or i read at one point when i was in grad school um that the word design um if you go back to its sort of latin root um mm -hmm. comes from the word um uh, liar and I was, oh, wow. I was always like what does that mean and what? yeah and at first i was uh, yeah same thing i was like what does that mean why why would it be the word liar and then i started thinking about it and it's probably just some you know the etymology of of how the word uh developed mm -hmm. but 
I started thinking about it more and more and I was thinking, well, in a way, as a designer, your goal, and, and I put illustration in that too, our goal is to make it so someone reads through an image in a certain manner without, uh, without thinking that someone is telling them where to look. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, like where their eye is supposed to go on a page. They're supposed to feel like, oh, I just naturally flowed through this image and not like they're being controlled. But we as illustrators or we as designers, in effect, are trying to design a page so it reads in a very distinct manner, that you're getting the information in a certain pattern, uh, and like all these other things that in a way turn into, well, we are trying to trick people by lying to them, by telling them, hey, you, you are in control, but in reality, we as the illustrator or the designer or the whatever it may be are really the ones in charge. Um, mm. And the, the, the book that I was reading talked a little bit about that, sort of like that sentiment yeah. that, yeah. you know, you are the one that is, is in control and you want your audience to feel at home but in reality, you're the one pushing the buttons. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, that, that sort of, I can start to see the connection at that point. And I don't, I may have been forcing it. I may have been trying to read so much into it. I was in grad school. I was mm -hmm. trying to read into everything and make it, everything sound smart. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and maybe, maybe I went too far in some cases and maybe I was reading way too much into that. But I, I do like the idea of like, I have a, a sort of hidden agenda that if I do a really good job, people don't even notice that I've forced them to read stuff in a certain manner. <laughs> it forced them to look at you yeah. and to think about you different, differently. Yeah, um, when I was uh, working in tech, we had this UX book club, um, which sounds, sounds really exciting, right? <laughs> yeah, um, nerd. Yeah, yeah. Nerd yeah. Well, let's, you know, it's with work. So we were like, let's let's get better at our jobs. Let's learn how to create better user experiences. That's we're extra. All very That's... passionate. That's very extra, passionate about it. Yeah. That's extra nerdy to throw <laughs> in. Let's get nerdy. better at our jobs. And one of the books, I kid you not, this is where I, it all started to start turn a little south for me. Was um, was called Triggered, and it was it was about it was about like basically, you know, it wasn't about being being triggered in the way the sense we use it now. It was about triggering actions in people. And, you know, I, I see it everywhere. I see, you know, every like notification mm -hmm. that comes mm -hmm. up from Instagram, just like, oh, you're so evil. <laughs> like, I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. I mean, we all know what they're doing, yep. right? But, you know, their whole, their whole, the whole reason for being is to keep us on the platform so they can sell another ad. And, you know, it, it drives me crazy. This so, is all of a sudden this live feed gets shut down. Yeah. We're, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah the uh well you know the, the equivalent of um it's like gamification in mm -hmm. the in that idea of like you could just get someone by saying hey if you try this one thing just a little bit longer play this one game or even you know you get a trophy for uh doing your duolingo everybody's like oh oh i get double points this next round if i could just do yeah. one more one more round of Duolingo, uh, and I pop a dopamine. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. and you get people that way, and you know, is are we? I mean, that's a bigger question of like, are we as an industry, in kidlit or in publishing, are are we playing into that in a way, or are we somehow, um, you know, part of that machine? And I I would hope to say you know no, <laughs> but I also know that in reality like. I want sales to happen because that means, you know, the closer I get to royalties yeah, or right. yeah, yeah. whatever, yeah. whatever it may no, be. I don't think you can divorce yourself from it. And, and I've been thinking about it a lot lately. Um, I guess just being dis disgruntled with the state of affairs and, you know, I think you have to come to terms with the fact that you, you live in the society you live in. Like this is what society is, is like right now. Yeah. And you can't. I don't want to say you can't change it, but you're, you're, you know, you came up in it. It's it's part of you to some extent or to a huge extent. Like you are influenced by society. That's all mm -hmm. there is to it. And you didn't you didn't make it happen. Uh, I think what I want to say is. 
you know, if you want to be, <laughs> you want to be anti-capitalist, you can, you can, you can dream of a different way, but ultimately you are still in a capitalist right. society. Yeah. That it's that kind of thing. Like you still need to put bread on the table while you dream of a new yep. way. Yep. Like, I, I've been reading these books. Uh, I'm just going on a deep dive with David Graeber, um, who wrote some really profound books. He was, um, I say was because he passed away not too long ago, but he was a an anthropologist, I believe, a British anthropologist who spent a lot of time in Madagascar. And he wrote, I first, first heard of him because he wrote a book called Debt, The First 5,000 Years, which <laughs> my, I remember my husband telling me about this and I'm like, why would you read a book on debt? That sounds like the biggest yawn. <laughs> And then he started, you know, really telling me about it. And it's like, I'm, I'm actually reading it now. Um, but it's talking about how the things that we take for granted, like once you start really looking at how society's formed, not through the lens of, of what we call like Western uh, exploration and, you know, colonization, once you start looking beyond that, you start to see that maybe what we're doing now is not necessarily natural or it's not necessarily the height of progress. It's just a way things turned out. And people like these archeologists that would make these discoveries would, you know, like looking at like this big chief and being like, oh, clearly he was a king. Like they would assume he was a king because they came from a nation with a king. Yeah. And you start to think like, okay, well, everything that happens now is a natural progression because that's just what happened. So I don't know. Debt is really interesting. It's talking a lot about um, how we use money as exchanges of virtue. <laughs> It's really deep, and I can't go into it too much. Like, but before that, I read The Dawn of Everything that he wrote, and oh my gosh, it just blew my mind. I like yeah, how I was man. I was originally worried that I went too like, <laughs> smart with my, like, like, hey, get a load of this design word and liar. <laughs> and then you're, you're throwing out all these, well, you know, if you read Nietzsche, and you, you know, jump in this, like, highbrow stuff that I'm... I, I understand what you're saying, but I also like the, there's the, the idiot kid in me that's going, I don't understand this I'm at sorry. all. I should, I should change the subject probably. No, no, but... it's fine. I, I love it. I actually love that. Like we, we start talking about this, like publishing and branding, and then it takes us to this world of like consumerism and, right. you know, like, like <laughs> here's, here's an interesting question. And maybe this is probably I, being that you were talking about those books, mm -hmm. I have a feeling this is going to play into it too. But like, I, one of the lessons I do with my seniors, teaching them about sort of like business practice stuff is we talk about the ethics mm -hmm. of illustration. Like, yeah. you know, would you take a job that uh, goes against your ethical beliefs if it paid uh, enough? And how much would it be? Like, what is, what is your breaking point? And are there ways to sort of counteract that so you feel less challenged by you know, a, a big paycheck or are there certain things that you just set in stone that you're never, ever going to do in your career? And one of the things that um, sort of uh, comes up in that for me is we're in the industry of books mm -hmm. and books are wonderful and I love books, but I also worry that we're in an industry wherein it uses lots and lots of paper and resources and mm -hmm. like, like, how do I mentally um sort of navigate those waters of like i want my books to be put out there and i i love buying books and i love having the tactile thing in my hand like i could never live on a kindle that is not not my world of any sort but like how do i morally justify the value of a book when i'm worried about you know the the logging and the the resources being used up and it's not an it's not an easy conversation to have in my head, uh -uh. and I, I don't have you have that same like challenge or like looking at your work. Have you ever like looked at a book and go like, oh, I wish they used a different paper that was. I mean, a lot of them use like recycled papers, and I think that's wonderful. Yeah, but there I are mean, certain papers like glossy papers. 
yeah. at the start. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think I think you can't be a you know conscientious consumer or creator in this world without thinking about the impact. And I hope I didn't just, just like throw this question in your head. Now you're like, why did I jump into this business? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not at all. I never and thought I, of that. You know, I think yeah. especially with kid lit a lot of us do that because we want to you know educate and make a difference for yeah. children like for for example in soren's seventh song you know it's all about trying again and getting back on the on the horse as yep. it were and finding you know that i mean i think kids need to hear that you know especially as we get into deeper and deeper stages of instant gratification you know you, you need to learn that sometimes yeah. not really everything's going to work out yeah yeah, yeah. patience is key. Well, we know as artists you definitely know <laughs> you gotta the, you gotta keep working at it to... i mean this, this sort of relates back to the original conversation that we had at the beginning when we were talking about you know making characters smile and happy mm -hmm. there's there was a article that came out i want to say like last spring or maybe over the summer uh that was talking about like how books don't have to have a happy ending that kids yeah. can survive an ending that is sometimes challenging and we as adults tend to think or 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 pigeonhole little kids and say they don't know how to handle this or this is too much for them to deal with and then all of a sudden we shortchange them yeah, on their ability uh, yeah yeah especially in america like and i i you know, you look at some European books and you're like, whoa, these things are, <laughs> these things are challenging for an adult sometimes. Right. <laughs> um, you know, like even, even the, the equivalent, um, uh, the book Journey that's by um, uh, 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 Frenchy, um, what's her last name? I'm drawing a blank. Mm. I have it sitting over right now, from my bookshelf. So. Anyway, it's a book about uh, people from, um, uh syria being refugees oh right and, yes okay. and it's, yeah. it's the tale of like this mother and kids moving um from one place yeah. to the next and having to survive yeah and you know it's what yeah francesca sana or french right. sana that's it right. my wife's up there helping me out in the background yep. but um but that idea of like it's told through such a beautiful way that you almost don't notice it like yeah the words hit hard but at the same time it's beautiful pictures of like the, this family moving together with birds flying with them on the whole trip right. and like you know that's not a book that is your standard uh, i forget what what uh publisher that was but that's not your standard like happy go lucky look at this cute little bunny and mm -hmm. they have a wonderful life in the end um and you know i wish that i uh, i hope that people can get to the point where they start to understand that that's like a valuable uh approach for uh how do i want to put this like that you don't have to tell the most happy tale all the time now this being said here i am and i like to draw silly things and yeah. i'm not the person probably to tell those tales well, um but that's okay you know, silliness is silliness is really helpful i mean it's useful like you've got the whole sort of a uh, spoonful of sugar yeah principle like you can have things be lighthearted and fun and silly and tell like, more challenging stories with that yep, yep. Yeah. Can, you, can you make something that is really deep and meaningful but also makes you giggle at the same time like uh, as much as i i love um humor i also love really dark humor sometimes and that really like oh yeah can be like making jokes that are potentially in poor taste, you know, like oh, talking about, yeah. um, uh, you know, uh, death in the family or things like that, which some people might immediately go like, no, don't ever do that. But like, that's how some people deal Gallows with humor. Yeah, yeah. Some, some people deal with their, their, uh, their grief that way. And that's okay. Um, okay. So let's get on a lighter topic now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, other candy. No, um, <laughs> okay uh if i'm gonna i'm gonna ask them oh my feed's going blurry i hope that's it goes away but um oh, yeah I don't, 
I'm gonna, I don't even know what mine looks like. Your, okay. Yours is solid. It's okay. perfect. Mine is just okay. the feed here goes blurry and then it will come back after a second. So anybody that's watching and you're going, what's wrong with my feed? It's on my end. Um, so you are, uh, you, you're a illustrator and you're able to go out there and make silly work and challenging work and whatnot. Um, I want to know what is the weirdest request that you've had as an illustrator, whether it be like for a specific gig or is it like a note that you got? Like, are there instances in your career that you can look back and go, that was really strange how that happened? Hard to think of anything specific, but you know, sometimes people will, usually if I get like, you know, thinking of notes and revisions, usually, usually if I get something, it makes sense. And sometimes I'll get something that doesn't really make sense. And it'll be like, the, the art director will say, oh, no, this is just, this is somebody's pet peeve. Can we just not do that? And then I understand it. Yeah. Like, um, I have something now where it's, it's like, can you make, make this one element red? I'm like, okay. It like, gets so specific. Yeah. But, okay, okay, sure. <laughs> I mean, if you really want it to be red, it can be red, you know? Yeah, it's not that critical um, to you, but why? There's no explanation too weird um i don't think of anything weird like turning around and looking at the stuff i have to see if anything jumps out at me. oh yes okay I, <laughs> I know i know oh my god no i probably shouldn't say this um, i <laughs> okay, okay I did. yeah don't throw anybody <laughs> under the bus don't, don't, I don't rat don't someone out anybody under the bus uh I, yeah okay I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Anybody wants to know can DM me. Yeah. No, you don't want that either. Don't ever say that. Oh. Um, okay. <laughs> someone's gonna DM you and Except want all the details, and you don't want to give all those out. Um, right. I mean, the one of the things that, or one of the reasons why I I ask that is just like we we work in an industry that is strange. I mean, yeah. Yeah. to 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 say that you're gonna end up drawing a book uh about an alligator that's white and uh you know like when you were a little kid or or even like now trying to explain to someone hey this is my job sometimes can be extremely challenging to go take me seriously and they go what are you what are you working on you go well it's a book about a alligator that's an albino and they go that's what you do for a living i go and i you know clean out sewers for my, for my job uh, right. can be a, uh, something that actually helps society. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we help society. We help society no, just in a different way. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, there is there is a challenge that comes with with sort of like uh, trying to get people to understand like how important this is or what an interesting job it is, but also to know like yeah, it's not all like it's not all drudgery. You get to do some some silly things. So like. Are there images in particular in your portfolio that you look back and you go like, I'm so glad I got to draw that? Um, I have a, well, I don't have a book coming out. There's a book coming out that I did the cover for. And uh, it's coming out in July. I don't have a copy yet. I think the publisher is no longer doing advanced copies. Okay. So, so anyway, it's coming out in July and it, it's on my, it, it's out. You can see it on my feed, but it is called Wicked Marigold. And one of the characters yep. is a blob of goo. So uh, I, I drew a blob of goo with, with, a, with a face, with emotion, a face expression. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was fun. Yeah, like that kind of thing. I like, um, actually, that's Betty. Um, they uh, Wait, Betty's the blob of the, goo? No, 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 no. no. No, that's Betty, the, the book. That's Betty. Okay. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, there is a scene in which it's a parade, and the the author yep. had written, he said, I, you know, because she used to host the Thanksgiving, the Macy's Thanksgiving parade, and he wanted to do a parade that was all like all of her films and stuff. It was just like you see everything, her like movies and TV shows going by. And I didn't know this until after I had finished the book. 
book, but apparently they had told the author, I don't know if you're going to get that. I don't know if anybody can do that. And that was one of the most fun things because it was so absurd and challenging, you know? <laughs> I, so. I feel like there is some festival and my wife, if she's listening upstairs can maybe inform me, but I feel like, oh no, it was a threes company festival uh, that oh, wow. happened somewhere. And we were very excited about the idea of going to that. And it's like, what a weird concept. I think, was it three, Three's Company? Oh, a Mrs. Roper festival. That's not even just Three's Company, but Mrs. Roper specifically. Uh, it's like- That is, that is special. Yeah, it, it's such a fun, like weird random thing. And I'm sure there probably is someone there also going like, nah, you probably shouldn't do that. But, um, <coughs> excuse me fighting off a of cough here. Um, the, I, I keep thinking sort of in my career, like there's, there's some books that I've done that are, I mean, I tend to work on a little bit more silly books just in general, but mm -hmm. um, I do love the idea that uh, I get to be a little kid at heart through a majority of my career. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> sorry, I'm choking to death yeah. here. No, don't do that. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm trying to drink some water. Get past it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Take your time if you need to. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, I treat it seriously, but like, man, it's just, there's times where I reflect back and just go like, what a fun world. And like to go to events where little kids are excited and uh -huh. you get to go read to them and be silly. And like the, for Soren, I did a, um, a book reading, uh, the day it came out or no the day after it came out uh and it was it was not well attended admittedly it was not well attended because it was a nighttime event mm -hmm. on a school day and the hope was that it would be more like targeted towards illustrators but what was so fun about it was not the like reading of the book it was i had a small crowd and i got to really be personal with them but mm -hmm. one of the things and, and since you read the book you know that maracas are part of the yeah. the storyline. Yep. Um, I bought a bunch of little maracas to oh. hand out to the crowd. And anytime the word maracas came up, they had to shake their maraca. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, it's a small crowd and I got these maracas and they're like, I thought they'd be so cool. Uh, and they are fun, but they are so small. They don't make a lot of noise. Oh. <laughs> and so it's just like really, really subtle, subtle noise that comes out of them. But then I got to sit there and like, anytime the word maracas came up, I would look at them and I go, okay, time to shake them. Yeah. And they would shake them. <laughs> and the word gets mentioned enough that by the end of it, they're all like, you know, they catch on that they're supposed to play it at certain mm -hmm. points, but then they forget. <laughs> and, then, and, and then I'm like, oh, I have to stall and wait for them to play their maracas. <laughs> and like, that's part of my career too. And that's, like, yeah. that's yeah. so fun. Like that's such a dumb thing but also so rewarding as an illustrator to say, okay, my job started out as just painting something and now I get to go do this dumb thing with people where I force them to play maracas mm -hmm. whenever I say the word and most of them go along with right. it. Uh, okay. So have you have you done readings of any sort of any of the books? Uh, no, I, I haven't. <laughs> do you want to? Um. That's a good question. I, I, at some point, I would like to write write my own books and, yeah. and do readings of that. I think I, I was invited once uh, for um, that. That's Claude. I've done a few things for, but I, you know, I showed up as the illustrator, and um, I, think I was invited to do a reading once because the author couldn't make it. But I think by the time that got sorted, it was a little too late, and you know, yeah. So. Uh, it feels it feels weird. I think that's probably part of. I think I think it's probably not as weird as my brain is telling me it is to to stand up there and read a book that somebody else wrote yes. or somebody else's story. Um, I have I, know, I have had that but, concern many many a times. Yeah, uh, it's and it's really ridiculous though because it's like I would have no problem going up and you know if somebody needed me to come read for kids and it was just like some random book or you know, my favorite book or something. I have no problem with that. I don't know why it is a bigger deal. I mean, why, why I'm making it a bigger deal than it is. 
I have that challenge on a regular basis and it's all I can chalk it up to is I feel like when I talk to an audience and little kids don't care, admittedly they don't care, but I, th I worry that there's this like perception of like, Oh, you wrote this. And then mm -hmm. when they find out I didn't, that I just did the pictures and just did the pictures sounds like I'm not part of the story building. And you know, in reality, like the pictures are a no, good portion. Love that you yeah. The pictures. <laughs> they don't, they don't yeah. care. They have no, like, none of them are going, mm, you didn't write those words. And so therefore you're not fun to be around. But I still have that, like, <laughs> it's the imposter syndrome. It's like, I'm gonna pretend that I wrote this book in front of you. And I always feel awkward about that. And so I do have that same sort of hesitation whenever I get asked to, um, to read someone else's words. And that happens quite often, you know, with, with, um, illustration projects and things of the sort that I get to ask that same sort of uh, like, can you come read this book? And it's like, well, I can, but I also have these books I wrote, but you know, it's, it's sometimes they just want that specific book at that moment and you have to sort of go do it. And uh, I, I've never had a kid come up to me afterwards and go again, like you're a liar. Uh, yeah, you're a fraud. Yeah, how dare you? You know the world. The word designer. Is just yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> you lied to us. This is all part of that design plan you talked about. Right. I watched that Gab and Doodle. Yeah, um, uh, <laughs> it'd be amazing, honestly, if some kid came up and said that. Mm -hmm. I would be so like mm -hmm. amazed that a kid uh, challenged right. me in a way like that. Um, I don't know what my wife just said that my or is saying my feed is still blurry. Hopefully it fixes itself. If it doesn't, we can always do another like a part two at a, yeah. at a certain point. Um, this just happens sometimes. Sometimes it's just the feed. So um, we will see. Uh, yeah. I'll turn it. I'll, we'll yeah, we'll come back to it. And my, my work will look beautiful and it will no longer. Uh, it won't look like the mess that it started as. Um, I'm excited so, to see it. I know you're working away over there and yeah. I'm working away over here and I have no idea what. Well, I get to watch you like, I saw you doing the pan pastel stuff. I am, yeah. I am a mess when I use pan pastels. Oh yeah, me too. I I'm doing everything messy. I don't know if you know this. Do you even see how messy this is? Well, wait. I can okay. be as messy as... Do, yeah. do, do, do me a quick favor and hold up your hand to the camera so I can see the back of your hand. Like the, 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 the meat oh, of your hand. Like that? Like, is that what you... Uh, you're talking about like I'll, I have a little bit, but I have. I'm wait. There's a delay. There's a delay on my feed where I'm watching. Oh. So yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, it's little. not that bad. No, it's not, not that, that bad. bad. Uh, but I didn't use that many either. I'm just kind of do an overlay. And and pan pastels also stick a little better in my opinion. Like they're not as dusty as regular pastels. Um, yes. but I am I am someone especially when I paint. By the end of the night, I'll have uh, all sorts of like. <laughs> there's times where I go to school the next day after doing something like this, or I go to, you know, an appointment on Friday and then I'm sitting there and I look at my hand and I just have paint just totally up my arm. And like, I will have showered, but I'd missed it. And then it looks like I'm just mm -hmm. a mess uh, because I, you know, have stuff or because I'm working with collage now, every once in a while I'll come up out of my studio and not know it. And I'll go and like, step into my shoes and I'm like, what's crinkling in my shoes? And immediately it's like, oh, it's tracing paper. And there's <laughs> something that just stuck to my sock and has been riding with me for the day. Uh, I have, it's starting to get finally faint. I don't know if you can see this dot. I know it's delayed, so I'll hold my hand there. Can you see this dot? Okay. Uh, that is that is graphite that I've been, that I've been carrying around with me since probably seven years old. <laughs> But I know I'm not the only one. No, that's a, that's a, was that a accident or was that a, I'm going to give myself a tattoo or pretend oh, it's no, a no, 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 that's definitely, that's, that's the hazard to drawing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because yeah. yeah. I know plenty of people that have those and it's, it's purely just a, I, uh, you know, I was pretending my pencil was a syringe and they, they did it to themselves of some sort. Um, Pencilling? Like, well, not intentionally. They they yeah. were pretending that it was a syringe, oh. and then they accidentally uh, went too far oh, okay. <laughs> and, yeah. and pierced the yeah. skin, and then they end up with a little piece of lead or graphite yeah. that's been stuck in there for you know however many years. Um, right. I uh, I don't know if I have any like art related 
tattoos, let's put it that way. Uh, I do, I have met other people that have the, the graphite. Yeah, the, but that's, the that's classic, graphite, the classic yeah, graphite bit. graphite, yeah. <laughs> um, Are you, are you someone who, uh, when you work, like, is your studio messy at the end? My studio is permanently messy. I'm trying to work through that. <laughs> What, what, what is but, that? Uh, you're trying to wade through it to get to your studio, <laughs> or you're trying to? No, I, I, I am, I am doing a a new. Oh, this is so boring. I'm sorry. I'm doing a new cleaning routine that is really working out for me. But the problem is the clean. The routine is, it, 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 it lists. It actually lists certain areas, and and for some reason, art studio is not one of. Them. <laughs> Okay. So, right. so I keep the rest of my house clean and then I don't go back and, and like, I, I, I mean, like once every two months I go back and I'm like, all right, I can clean the studio now. And I need to do something about that. Like I need to, to change the way I, I've, uh, you know, set up this routine, but eh, we'll figure that out in time. I, I almost guarantee that my art studio is dirtier than yours. <laughs> one this is this is oh yeah we're, we're gonna have a battle now um my art studio has first of all two kitty litter boxes okay. in it you win. yeah <laughs> and because i work with tissue and tracing paper okay. i have piles just piles of little scraps okay. everywhere like there's just not a spot in my studio that is free from scraps at this point yeah. um and it is it is problematic and i keep like meaning to get down here and clean up and i just don't have the the time or uh i'm distracted by other things yeah that um, I understand. but it, it is okay. it is challenging <laughs> for, me, for me it's it's i'm gonna say it's less probably less dirty because you know, this is all i use for traditional material so i do get like some like powdery dust in places i don't really use tracing paper very often when i i don't know but but for me it's it's clutter it's it's like not putting things away properly mm -hmm. so they just pile mm -hmm. up um and yeah tripping hazards is is definitely something i have become familiar with <laughs> do you have do you but, have besides the graphite in your um in your hand do you have any art injuries any art injuries uh, oh well i mean no not now but gosh i sure got a lot of um cuts oh my god nobody nobody wants to hear this i've gotten a lot of cuts while making mock ups in my I, w I want to hear it you know i want to hear it that that's it i just didn't want to talk too specifically about you know fingers and exacto knives oh but okay yeah well i'll i'll yeah. go there i cut the tip of my thumb off off <laughs> Uh, I took off a, a good, like, meaty chunk down to the bone on my thumb when I was doing matting at one point. I was matting a bunch oh, of yeah. photos yeah. for, a, for an assignment, and I all of a sudden was matting, and I'm like, why are there red dots all over my mat? Oh, my God. And I was like, oh, I know. It's starting oh, to no. late. It takes you a while. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then immediately it's like, I need to, you know, figure out how to deal with this, and I called 911 because I was like, I can't drive. My hand hurts so bad, mm -hmm. and... I was I was afraid to, and so they show up, and I had saved a little chunk that I had chopped off, Smart. and they just put a band aid on it and said, "Just keep an eye on it," and that was it. And I was like, "What?" Oh, that's embarrassing. Yeah, and I was I was <laughs> so I was like so bummed. I thought, "Oh man, I'm gonna have a good story for everybody. This is gonna be so cool. They're gonna go like, what happened to your finger?'" And I could say like, "I chopped a bit of it off," and in reality, it just healed back, and there isn't really much of an yeah. issue to it. Um, I uh. My, my 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 father well, i probably shouldn't be telling this story but my father cut um <laughs> thumb off on a table saw halfway or not halfway through just to the skin on the other side and they sewed it back on, on so he's got this weird little like it's m partially misaligned let's put it that way uh i, that's, I, I got i got one that oh, is related oh go for it okay this is for anybody that has trouble with this stuff uh plug your ears for a few minutes and let's yeah. let's get let's get gross <laughs> my grandfather was a tailor 
and he sewed his finger on an industrial sewing machine. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like pretty brutal. Like the the big needle going all the way through it a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And the thread. <laughs> oh, that one's yeah. that's pretty good. Yeah. You might have me. You might have me beat on that one. <laughs> I thought my dad's story. It's just, prepared, it's, but... it's, I don't think it's. Even, it, I don't think it's better, but it's more unique. I don't. I don't think you really hear that so much. I, I chalk it up to that's a pretty good like, the thread through it, yeah. and I, I feel like and maybe maybe it's the same thing with my dad. Like, when he told me about that, I was like, oh, my dad's so like, you know, like I can't believe that happened to him. And then I know that probably at the time. He was he was old enough and like one of those like you know it was a time when you had to be a man mm -hmm. and you couldn't cry and he probably like took it like a champ <laughs> <laughs> and you know it happens to me and I'm gonna uh, uh, I, had a, I I I hit a you know I got a paper cut on my thumb it's the worst <laughs> complaining oh, about oh it gosh, no. stubbing your toe like how is stubbing your toe so awful like it's just a toe. You think it like so the size that your toe is, the amount of excruciating pain that you experience. It's all it's like it's unbelievable. Nerves <laughs> nerves in the edge of that toe. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but pinky toe, ten times worse than big toe. Yes, yes. Yes, exactly. And I don't it's gotta be it has to be something about the nerves in it. This is Yeah. This is called how do you deal with uh random pains? This is our medical talk for the day. Um, what are these topics? <laughs> this is this is where this thing goes. My wife writes down all the weird topics that come up. I remember I was at a doctor at one point and I asked, is the funny bone called the funny bone because it's the humorous bone or the humor? And mm -hmm. the, the uh, nurse practitioner or doctor or whoever it was I was talking to sort of just rolled her eyes at me and then I, I was like, no, I'm serious, is it? And she goes, no. <laughs> I'm like, but come on, like, that's perfect. It's called humorous. And like, like why, why not? That's the perfect name or perfect reasoning for that to be called the funny bone. Uh, mm -hmm. And she just did not, she did not like my, uh, my sense she of humor. She had no time for you. Yeah. <laughs> she, she had been on duty yeah, yeah. for the last... 38 yeah, hours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she had no on, time for you and your on, goofiness. On call with, uh, yeah. with a bunch of like six screaming four-year-olds that have the flu. And I'm in there going like, get a load of this joke. <laughs> Bless those first responders. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see, Bear, uh, oh, uh, Bear Edwards, who, who watches a lot of these and has said, uh, was it? I was making a mock-up for a client with an exacto and cut a chunk of my left ring finger off. Had to go to the ER for stitches. I remember there were there were uh, students when I was in uh, college that would walk around barefoot and they would stepped on a, stepped on an exacto blade. Like, oh. first of all, like in art school, you don't walk around with no uh, no no socks or, or shoes on because there's going to be stuff everywhere. Like not just that, but like chemicals. It's like cadmium, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, I mean, I did a lot of dumb things when I was in, uh, I, hopefully there's no seniors watching right now, but I'll tell a story that uh, uh, I I feel bad about to this day, and it will make sense uh, when I say this, and maybe make sense for who I am as a person. Um, they had this awesome, like, video that talked about health and safety when I was a freshman in college. And so they talked about uh, black snot, uh, where, like, if you're doing, do you know what black snot is? No, well, no. It sounds like coal coal mining thing. It's it's from doing too many drawings with charcoal. Oh, okay. You just blow your nose at the end of it, and it comes out black because all, right. all the charcoal yeah. dust. And so they right. warned us, like, don't be surprised if you get black snot. And they they would talk about <laughs> certain things don't like that, surprised. but they didn't they did not warn us about certain like they talked about like spray paint. Yeah. You know, like, hey, that's yeah. something you got to be mindful of. But I had a teacher, this guy named Jack Massey who I thought was awesome. I still think is, is pretty darn awesome. Um, and he showed us some collage stuff that he did back in the day uh, when he was sort of uh, going to grad school and things of the sort. And it was this um, really amazing sort of like weird textural sort of things that he got out of old magazines. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking like, that's cool. I love it. And 
so he told me what the process was and what he would do is he'd take a magazine and then he'd take lacquer thinner and you apply lacquer thinner to it and you would uh you could essentially it pulled up the ink and then you could move the ink around however you wanted and i was like that's cool cool i love it and so i decided i'm going to do the same thing and so i got all the stuff i needed for it yet he didn't tell me that lacquer thinner is like one of the most toxic solvents that you can use and you should be wearing not only like in an invented area but be using you know uh, mm -hmm. respirators and all sorts of stuff and so what I would do is I'd go out and do it in like the studio lab or whatever and without any mask or anything of the sort. Mm -hmm. And then what was even worse was I'd come back to my room and to let it dry, I would put it underneath my bed <laughs> and let it dry. And so like all these noxious fumes are just leaching up into me at night. And I'm sure my roommate at the time was like, you know, what the hell is this horrible stink that's in the room? And I feel bad to this day because, you know, I may have taken off some of his uh, life <laughs> expectancy as well at the same time. Um, but like no one told us and we just did so many things like what happens if I slam nails into this and hope for the best? Mm -hmm. um, did, did you go to art school proper? I don't even know. I did, but I studied uh, video and oh, that's, that's uh, right. sequential that's right. arts. That's right. So I didn't. I don't know. Like I, you know, I had I had drawing classes and art classes, and I definitely messed around with charcoal. But most no black of my dumb, no, no, no black stocks. Not most of my experimenting was just like I don't know stuff I did as a teenager, like like on my own, just being like, let me. I don't know. Like I would get some random set for Christmas with like lots of you know, paint yeah. there and just be like. Cool. I'm gonna use this. I don't need this. It's like no windows in this room. That's fine, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I I'll use oil paint in a closed environment yeah, no with turpentine. I, I, there there were so many things that like I just didn't know, mm -hmm. and now I look back on it and go, you know, I would never ever do that, or I would warn students. But I also think that I really did. Oh, look, I'm clear again. Awesome. Um, I really think that part of that formed my personality. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so like, yeah, it took a couple of years off, but at the same time, like, you know, maybe it made me a little wackier than what I would have been. Uh, holding, holding paintbrushes in your mouth mm. like, when you're using them. That's, that's a big one. I've done a lot of that. The, Before I, I was like, all these colors are non-toxic, right? They wouldn't sell me toxic. Colors. Yeah. Cadmium. They, there's just cadmium everywhere. So it's okay to have and like, right, and to right, hold. Yeah. Um, it's it's now I'm like super careful about I will never buy cadmium paint unless it's cadmium free paint. Mm. So like I have cadmium free yellows and reds and things of the sort. Oh no, I dropped a blurry again. Um, oh, let me, let me see. Also, I, also lead white, you know. <laughs> there's uh oh yeah. I'm just reading. My wife says she had plenty of cadmium paint. We're all gonna we're all gonna find out how horrible it is in in you know a few more years when it hits us, but. Uh, Honestly, if the paint doesn't get us, something else will. <laughs> all those pan pastels, all the all the particulate that you released in the air by spreading it around on your work. You have That's to say it. this just as I'm doing <laughs> more pan pastel, don't you? <laughs> my my challenge is going to be all the Elmer's glue that stuck to my skin and peeled off layers and layers on a regular basis. Oh, that's um, probably good for you. Like a, like a yeah, facial for your fingers. This is my this is my personal exfoliant. It's exactly. called glue. Um, <laughs> is that, yeah. So tell me, tell me a little bit about like, uh, what did you do in art school? Like what kind of, what kind of student were you? Were you the, like the, the cool show off kid who always did amazing work? Were you the kid who would walk in at the last oh, second no. and go like, <laughs> I yeah. hope this is like, no, I was the kid who would spend like all of my time hanging out with the skaters and then being like, oh man, I have assignment due. I, I'm not going to see you tomorrow, guys. Oh, like <laughs> that was it. That was you it. just had to <laughs> ditch him at the last minute. What what years Wait. were you in school? Uh, uh, oh, you want to ask me that? Come on, are you going to date me? Okay. Or, like I'm going to um, date myself. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no, no. Uh, let's see. How can I get there without? I went, okay, it was, the, it was the 90s. Oh, you're so old. Yeah. old. I know. <laughs> oh, I'm so old. Yeah. Like yeah. seriously, did you uh, did you even have computers back then? Um, 
I was, I was. Mm, I will tell you. I know. I was the '90s too. <laughs> I was. We we probably are in the same era. I yeah. I will say I graduated in the year 2000. Oh no, you went to school with Devin. That's right. Well, you were you were at RISD when Devin was there. Devin, but you no. Devin you and I graduated the same year. Other. Yeah, but you didn't know her. No. You no. knew her, right? You did. No, okay. I didn't. She she was one of the uncool kids while I was I was like the popular kid. <laughs> That's <laughs> probably totally the opposite. I was, I was the uh, scrawny, vegan, straight edge kid that spent all of his time in his apartment making work or playing Nintendo sixty four. That was my. I was that kid, but I just spent all my time hanging out with the skaters instead of. Yeah, so you, you were cooler than I was. I hope my dad doesn't listen to this. <laughs> but it's, it's probably a little past that. <laughs> Imagine he's listening. And I'm like. Man, you were hanging out with those those skater kids. I can't believe it. You're out of the will. I know. Uh, I know. I thought I thought all this time. I thought you got something out of your art school. Yeah. <laughs> what did I send you there for? Um, I. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm working in art. It's fine. It all it all worked out. <laughs> I have a job, Dad. It's it's okay. Yeah. Check out this book I made. He's proud of me. <laughs> Are you sure about that? Have you asked him? Oh. Guys, he will not shut up about it. Really? Yeah. Guys, my dad That's... loves me. <laughs> <laughs> if you take one thing from this whole conversation, it's that. <laughs> like, I like how you're like defending. Uh, I didn't mean it in a way that it was like you got to defend yourself. But I love how it turned into like, yeah, yeah, he loves me. He's he's. Why he, lo he? he loves me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, you start questioning that now. No. <laughs> like, no, my dad I, uh, and I have a good relationship. Okay, it's good. Fine. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately when you're done, you're going to call him up and be like, we're good, right? We're good? <laughs> um, I did, Was he supportive of you in the arts Always. originally? Always. Always, yeah. Both my parents were. Um, were, did they have an arts background, or were they were you the the freak kid who went to art school? Um, my, my dad was a musician. So oh, okay, yeah. He was a freak in his own right. Yeah. Um, and my mom was super super crafty. So, yeah, okay. I mean it was yeah. just there. Like, yeah, there was never any question. And I think it was, you know, I was doing it at such a young age, like drawing. And drawing to, you know, I, I kind of just blew right past um, stick figures. Okay. And I think that they knew that there was something going on and they just were like, yeah, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to nurture this. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Kind of how it worked out. Yeah. I, uh, my parents were cool, but not, not that cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't even say they're that cool now either. I don't think they got much better. No, uh, my my rule or uh, a way that I explain my parents is for many many years the only spot they would hang up my artwork in their house was in their garage. <laughs> and so, like you well, know, prime it real estate. That's the decor. Yeah. I mean, it was I like mean, as a designer, I understand that. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that is that is part of it. Um, part of it. <laughs> Part of it is and it's heartbreaking, yeah. but <laughs> like you know that that settee and the uh, would, and the pillow would, combination was really really well thought out. You're on their, <laughs> their side now, and you're yeah. and your your drawing of of you and the tree just wasn't in the same color scheme. I'm sorry. <laughs> Honestly, that is probably not too far off from a lot of um, and. <clears throat> they they are amazing people and they're really supportive of me in the arts and whatnot. But they are business folk, and so it did take some like some convincing to get them to understand that like this could be a career and this could be more than just a like starving artist situation. Um, but I also know that uh, they it it was a uh, a leap of faith in a parent to go hey go off to art school. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that is yeah. that is a like, what value is there in that uh, long term for um, uh, you know viability and longevity, and 
you know, as a parent now, I'm like, would I want my kid to go to art school? Probably not. I don't think he's going to, but probably not. Um, partially um, because I think that like, you can learn everything outside of art school. Well, not necessarily. That. I mean, I teach in an art school, so I think there's value to art school. Oh, I just don't know. Sorry, I didn't mean that. No, no, you can <laughs> say that. You can say that. There's honestly, these are the questions that we're asking all the time to not only ourselves, to, but to like the the you know thinking about like what value do we bring to the classroom and how do we make it better for the right. students and make it worth their time right. and take on debt and things of the sort. Um, oh, yeah. But I think more so like uh, art school isn't for everybody, and it takes a certain type of person for that to really work out and so like mm -hmm. not everybody can walk into an art school and thrive and i'm not yeah. saying that my son won't thrive in a um in an art school setting yeah but uh i think that he would be better in something that was much more like structured than what i, I went through i did school. like I, I i don't i did not get out of it what i should have but i, I just don't think i was in the right headspace at the time yeah it was those like, I was skater like, boys like, that you were hanging out yeah, with the whole no, time it's true it was like it was like so much more important for my life experience to just like have community with friends yeah <clears throat> then it then it was to hone my craft and, and you know i i have honed my craft so it it worked okay but I had to do it on my own time. But there is, there's value in that. Early at 18, there's, you know? there's value in that though too. Like, you know, it's, I, my, my impression of art school is not that it's a place to learn the skills to become an artist. Right. And I know that sounds strange. Like, I don't think it's a technical school. It can be, there's some people that treat it that way. Some teachers that do. But that is not what I see the value in it. I see the value in it in the community side of things. And like, yeah. that's, I mean, I look back and I, I went to RISD and, you know, RISD has a reputation of like, ooh, it's RISD. Mm -hmm. But in reality, the value that I got out of it is less about that sort of um, the technical side of things and more about the relationships and the networking that came from that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, even the equivalent of like, now knowing Devin through the the connection of, of RISD and things of this sort. How do you how do you know Devin out of, out of curiosity? Um Devin and I took a class together and then uh same with Tanya and a few other folks and then we decided to meet up at Bologna. Oh, oh you were and that's right, we you were in that group. Became, yeah, and yeah. Became awesome friends. Gotcha. Awesome gotcha. friends. So did you, did you hear what Tanya said about you during the the gab and doodle with her uh well i saw part of it because i had an appointment so i know she mentioned me in the beginning but if she said something specific i can't really oh, tell you. oh man man they things. were awful things i wouldn't even there I, there's no way i wouldn't be convinced that she said anything bad about me because she's such a gem she's... that woman is the funniest i love her so much she's so good she's so good I just remember she floored me because she made some joke and it was in a joking manner, but she, she called you, called the group a bunch of, uh, uh, B words. Oh yeah. That's, yep. That's Tanya, Tanya like, right there. And we were having this conversation and she threw that out. I'm like, wait, what? That just caught me completely off guard. Cause that was not the word that I was expecting her to use of any did sort. She, did she explain what she means? Uh, I think so. If I remember correctly, um, she said, I think that uh, you guys are 100 percent that and that she wasn't joking. <laughs> no, I'm just, uh, no, uh, I, I think it was in a, in a sort of jovial manner. And I don't remember exactly if it was like in relation to something, but I feel like there was some if I remember correctly, I feel like there was some like inside joke that that really yeah. related to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, uh, I don't Well, if it's, if it's inside, I don't know if I should say it very specifically, but <laughs> it, it, okay. It is a term of respect. That, that's yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah. It is a okay. term of respect. But it's, uh, out of, out of like when I first started talking to her on the Gabba Doodle, I remember thinking like, Oh, she's pretty serious. And like, she's, she's like, one of those like real artsy fartsy type oh, and then she dropped that yeah. and i was like whoa 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 whoa, whoa. 
you just oh. walk in here and you throw down the B word, uh, yeah. talking about people that you hang out with. And I, I just mm -hmm. didn't know how to process it at the time. Um, I like how uh, I'm so worried about someone being offended by the B word that I keep calling it the B word. I know. It, well, we, that's what we say publicly. That was not how it came about <laughs> in the moment. <laughs> like, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it's a term of respect. So if somebody does something really good that we like, then everybody will be like, oh, now, I love it. B, 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 B. <laughs> yeah. For clarity's sake, that's only for that group, correct? People can't walk up to you and well, say no. that word. Oh, yeah, no, I, well. <laughs> I heard on yeah, I Gavin Doodle not. that it's okay if I just call you <laughs> and this. I would never, and I would never say that to somebody else. Yeah. But, <laughs> but if they were, if they knew what it, what it meant, yeah. if they knew it was a term of respect and endearment, then, then I would say that, but it's like, they don't, they don't know that, so. <laughs> if they can contextualize it yeah. in the right way, yeah. then you're good. <laughs> I mean, I, I. It's the equivalent of like on a regular basis, I call my son a dork uh, or like oh, yeah. ding dong. And like <laughs> to me, if he wasn't a ding dong, I think there would be an issue. Like I, I need to oh, call yeah. him that because that, that not because I want to like put him down and be like, Hey, no. you don't, <laughs> you're not smart uh, or anything of that sort. But it's just like, it is that loving yeah. and like term of endearment of like, I'm going to call you ding dong yeah. because I love you. Not because I have a problem with it. Yeah, nerd um, is to totally like a like something that's a, that, that's also like a term of like affection or respect. I like, I know. regularly walk into my classroom and mm -hmm. instead of saying like, "Hey everybody, how was your weekend?" I regularly <laughs> walk in. Oh, what's up, nerds? Yeah, there, and there you go. There you go. Then, cool then, prof in the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, well, I part of me really wants to have this like uh i'm the jock of the art school mentality <laughs> of like walking in yeah. and like I've, I've joked with people that i really want to get letter jackets made <laughs> so i can walk in and be like look at i'm the cool guy walking in mm -hmm. um and no one seems to be on board with that as much as i am uh <laughs> but uh the that idea of like i'm gonna call them nerds and i'm going to feel big and tough and of course it's in a satirical manner because i am not big and tough i'm big uh but i'm not <laughs> of any sort um and so like it is that that term of endearment and most of them are pretty good in fact some of them will say things back to me immediately uh and challenge and those are the kids where i'm like these are the ones that get it they understand that this is all like in jest um do do you uh <laughs> Does your husband uh, work in the arts? I'm, I'm going to answer that first. I'm going to interject that my headphones give me a low battery um, alert. So if I drop out, I might need to switch to well, uh, wired headphones. Maybe this is a good time. I wonder if we should do a part two. Okay. Yeah, we can do a part because two. Because I still um, have a, my feed is still going blurry periodically. Okay. And so why don't we do this? Mm -hmm. For anybody that's listening, I'm going to stop. Uh, the feed for a matter of like maybe two to three minutes is my guess. Uh, upload it so it's on my Instagram and then uh, I will come back in and if you just sign back in uh, I will invite you in and we can continue the conversation right from there okay. and just make it, you know, keep it going but uh, that'll that'll hopefully clear up some of the feed issues that I'm having on this side too while you adjust your headphones. Yeah. Sound good? Okay, so anybody that's listening just hop back in in a matter of like you know, about three minutes. All right, here we go. One, two, three, bye. Dorks, it's me, <laughs> Mark Hoffman, coming to you with part two of my lovely evening with Jennifer M. Potter. I will let Jennifer in in a second. For some reason, my iPad uh, it just disappeared and I need to make sure, I, so you get to see my shoulder for a second. Um, let me make sure I get my live feedback up on there so I can see what people are saying and, and have a conversation. So, um, we're in part two. I'm going to let Jennifer in just a second. Uh, hello to everybody that's joining back up or people that are joining for the first time. Let me put my standard ask us anything, us, anything in the comments here. And I will pin that. Um, and so feel free to, uh, oh, there we go, pin comment. Uh, someone named Jennifer M. Potter is 
trying to get into this live feed. Do you know who she is, Laura? <laughs> oh, don't let her in? Okay, let me let her in. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if she pops in here in a second. Uh, there we go. <laughs> you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Okay. Oh, I, I see it. It's looking at the ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> there we what go. Is this view that we're getting. Okay. It's uh. Okay. I like what you've done with the ceiling yes. there. Um, Why is it not doing it? Do it. Do the thing. Okay. There we go. All right. So, uh, oh, wait, wait. Why am I not getting my live feed up here? Like, drop my live feed on my other iPad. Uh, okay. So, I don't even remember what we were talking about. We were talking about calling people. You asked me if my husband was artsy. Oh, that's what it was. Yes. yes. He's a musician. He's a musician. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. So, does he. And his family art? is very artsy, and okay. that's really awesome for me. Because, I, I mean, it's, this is awesome. They're great. But uh, I do. Like anytime, you know, like when I was like, I oh, guys, I'm going to quit my job and be an illustrator. It's really nice to not have your in-laws judge you. <laughs> so, yeah. You really picked a winner there. She's going off the deep end now. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Did, uh, uh, now, what kind, of, what kind of music does he make? Mm, mm, he does, he's mostly doing synth stuff like psychedelic I don't know how to explain it <laughs> he's done a lot he was um he came up in the DC punk scene so Whoa. like or like art punk stuff and was he was he in the the like hardcore scene there no like he was hardcore? sort of after that but um if you're familiar with it you know some of his bands bandmates were on discord so it's definitely in that vein yeah yeah. I know Discord. I have lots of Discord albums here. Do you know Black Eyes? Uh, I don't know that one. Okay. All right. Well, um, that is uh, then. Then it doesn't matter. But <laughs> his okay. bandmates were in Black Eyes, who are touring now and having a bit of revival. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, he's been in a lot of bands. <laughs> no, I mean like the the DC punk post punk hardcore scene was like. That was part of the, the stuff that I listened to. Yeah, of course. You so, said you were straight edge hardcore. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I was probably more partial to the Midwest uh, hardcore scene, but like. Such as? Well, or, or, or post punk hard or emo. Not, not emo like. <laughs> no, I, I know. I know what emo yeah, is. Yeah. <laughs> like the, the emo that you have to explain is not the emo yeah, <laughs> that everybody else that, thinks of. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, yeah. thank you. Thank yep. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> the amount of times that I say I was into emo and people are like, oh, and I'm like, no, 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 no. It's, no. it's it's hardcore guys lying on the stage screaming about their relationships with their mothers. Yes. That's, that's which, yeah. is, which in a way I think <laughs> is actually where some of the like the emo stuff nowadays came from, <laughs> but totally yeah. different. Totally, totally different. different yeah. Time. Um, <laughs> Uh, OG yeah, emo. Lots, of, lots <laughs> yeah. of like people getting beat up at shows and oh and, yeah oh yeah uh, oh, some uh, pits uh, yeah and earth crisis stage earth. diving yeah. oh okay yeah uh -huh. yep. Yep. yep okay yep um so uh <laughs> I, the uh I imagine that wait have you done any artwork for his for his band I did I did artwork for uh one of his bands at some point but that was like a long time ago. What, Nothing was it all like cute kid lit stuff? <laughs> no, it was very psychedelic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was not doing kid lit stuff at that time. So, wait, were you into that music, or is it you? You've you've adopted it since? Uh, no, uh, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> How do I answer this? I was. I I liked the shows. I can't say I loved the all of the music. I listened to some of it. I think I listened some to some of the more um accessible <laughs> i'm gonna say poppier stuff okay. <laughs> you know like i don't know fugazi or something okay. but um but there was that's a lot that was... fugazi is not poppy but no no i'm that's what i'm trying to say it's more accessible it's like there there are tunes okay there are melodies you know it's not just yes. like <gasps> you know <laughs> Okay, okay. I hope that wasn't too loud. That might have been really loud and weird for people. We lost ten people from the feed. With ten people, yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, 
but I love the shows, you know, it's, again, just like with the skaters, it's just like the community, the camaraderie, the, like that, like, I, I loved that. And I loved going to shows. And like later on, I went to other kinds of shows, just, you know, as my taste changed. And yeah, it's just about going to a place, seeing some music, seeing people, you know, and hanging out and having a good time. <laughs> Love those skaters, huh? They just keep coming up in that conversation. Uh, <laughs> I was referencing an earlier point. <laughs> <laughs> I did what I do to my to my wife. We watch uh, all sorts of shows, and we watch this show called "So You Think You Can Dance." Mm -hmm. Back in the day, I've heard, I've heard uh, of it. Yeah, there was a a guy on it named uh, Neil, Neil or Liam, Neil. Uh, and my wife made some comment at some point about it, and ever since then, I've joked that she has a crush. And on mm. Neil, mm -hmm. and it's just he this might. ongoing thing. He's like we have no interest in the guy whatsoever, but forever. <laughs> or like my wife had a crush on uh, Daryl Hall. But <laughs> I'm gonna constantly say that she had a crush on Oat the entire time. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> like, of just course always God. misstate it. <gasps> this, that that Oats, mm, he was. I had to I had to like fend fend him off or fend her off from Oats because she was just talking about all the time. She there wanted it as our, our wedding I, song. I, there was something that was like from, like you just reminded me, I don't know if it was SNL or if it was some other kind of sketch comedy show where they had created a, an album featuring all of the least famous duos, like members of duos. And yeah, all I can Paul. remember is like some actor, like, with his with one leg up looking at the cam camera going hi um oats <laughs> yeah it's like oats and garfunkel or something I'm, i feel bad because like oats of course like it's probably a wonderful musician but just because of that mustache <laughs> like he 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 plays second fiddle because of that one hey, i bet that mustache worked did a lot of work for him in, in that era <laughs> you know i wonder I wonder if he still has the mustache. That'd be a, that'd be a real challenge in today's market to, to hold on to that I mean, my, thing. Um, my dad has had a beard for, I think since, I don't know. Apparently, when I was a child, he he shaved it off once, and I went and found the hair and asked him to put it back. Like when I was like two, <laughs> <laughs> he said that I would I would not um, I wouldn't come to him. Unless he spoke, and then I would realize who he was. <laughs> so, like after that crisis of like his daughter not knowing him, it's just yeah. been like pro beard. Right <laughs> yeah, you don't, yeah. you don't really remember at this point what he looked like without a beard of sorts. I have seen him shave once. I think I was a te teenager, and it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I don't know who that is. <laughs> My, uh, probably, probably like oats without the mustache. <laughs> I, I I like I have a, a beard and whatnot now, and it was it's, it was a pandemic beard, and I've held on to it because I uh, I don't have much of a chin. Uh, and uh, <laughs> my dad, though, for years, uh, we saw pictures of him, and he had a mustache at one point, and it was. It was just like a rat tail on his lip. It was not pretty of any sort. Or it was it was a like, like uh, a caterpillar with alopecia, basically. You know, like it was there wasn't a lot of hair there. Yeah. Uh, and he looked really bad in these in these uh, photos, and so I just assumed I could never have one. Mm -hmm. But I would so I would give anything right now to have my dad grow one back. Yeah. Just. I never saw it when I, when he was uh, when I was alive. It was before my time. It was like you know the '60s or something like that. He had this this horrible mustache, um, but man, I would give anything to get that that monstrous thing back on his lip. Uh, <laughs> it's just it was so bad um, that I I wonder like now because I've had this beard long enough. My son like there was an age where I'm trying to think how old was he when the pandemic hit. That was what 2020. So four years ago, he was six. Like he may not remember a hundred percent what I look like without one at this point, minus like, like seeing some pictures and like, that's weird to me because it hasn't been that long since I've had one, but man. Okay. Okay. Weird subject. We're going to shift the subject. <laughs> subject change. Well, we don't want to talk about beards. When you shave, 
he might not recognize you. Yeah. <laughs> he might be scared and run away and mm -hmm. never come home again. Um, right. I'll wait until he's away at college or something like that, and that's when I'll do it. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, what thing do you hate illustrating? Um, I, I will do anything, but I guess... Um... Yeah, I can... I I can I can break that statement real quickly. Car, car, I will find you something. No, here we go. I've got some answers. So, you know, I have done plenty of things with cars in them, but I do they, I do find them annoying because they're weird things that you have to draw on different angles, and I don't I don't really like that. Um, yeah. But I'll do it. Uh, it needs to happen. They're part of our world. It's fine. Um, I if 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 I ever got a book about a spider like i i already oh. have like i have my reference ready it is a 3d like it's a video game spider then i'm like okay i can just reference this spider so i don't have to look up spiders but if, <laughs> but if there's going to be a lot of spiders i'm gonna have to pass <laughs> right. i think that's it just spiders in general like you're not a spider person altogether just i don't know what happened i think i was relatively okay like obviously i had my like phase as a kid when like you know like daddy long ones are fun <clears throat> but i don't know something happened and i regressed somehow yeah. like uh, okay so let's let's uh, dive deeper into that let's figure okay. out uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> i have the same thing like so you could draw a cartoony spider and you're okay with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not because I have the same thing. Drawing with... of it, it's the references. I don't like. I get I get real creeped out. Slugs <laughs> and snails for me. Same thing. Really? Like, I, I, I have drawn a snail. I have I have had that do a snail in uh, a songbird dreams of singing. It's one of the last animals I did, had to do. I don't have a problem drawing them. They're yeah. Absolutely fine. Uh, but having to look at them. Mm -hmm not as yeah. fun yeah. i, I okay. will like, like there's sometimes where it's really fascinating like and and i put into that it's not just slugs and snails it's any gelatin puppy dog street. tails no <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> i can't stand them. oh my god i would never bobtail dogs only <laughs> yeah oh, only the front end never show me the backside um <laughs> the uh i mean that's that's a good rule for life <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to see their butts um we, we have two dogs right now and we're we're still having problems. They're relatively new. We're still having problems with some potty training. Oh, God. One of the, there. so there's, yeah. there's lots of conversations about who went out, who went potty. You know, mm -hmm. they do a one or a two. Uh, mm -hmm. okay. like, God, you oh. never thought you would talk. Well, you had a kid, but like, you never yeah. thought I would talk about poop so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was telling my son, it's like when you first have your kid, it's the first like week. You're like, did they go to the bathroom? And how yeah. much? What they do, and you're tracking it. Because you're supposed to like pay attention to it yeah. uh, for for uh, making sure that they're healthy, essentially. Um, but anyways, uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, no, uh, slugs, snails, uh, sea cucumbers. Ooh, yeah. No. Uh, yeah. See, all right. Yeah, you're on board. Uh, anything that is gelatinous, I have problems with. Jello. So like, or, or the way that I put it is anything that can like that has no bones. Uh, yeah essentially like, like i don't like worms i love to draw worms worms are mm -hmm. hilarious i never ever want to touch a worm in my life mm. i have no interest um but conceptually they're cool uh <laughs> so like it's you're it's, you're okay with them existing <laughs> yeah yeah like they can do their thing as long as they don't come around my parts mm -hmm. uh and then we're then we're gonna have problems right. and i yeah. i think it's the same thing like i think there was an incident mm -hmm. And I, I trace it back to being at a fishing camp in Canada mm -hmm. and going to a little, they had a freezer that they had some like sodas and things in and I touched the handle. I, uh, I realized it the other day, I touched the handle and there was a slug on it. Mm -hmm. And that, it, yeah. it uh, forever changed me. <laughs> yeah. And now yeah, it's, understandable. it's either that or it's my brother at some point probably like stuck a worm in my face. Yeah, it. that sounds very um, brother. So I can, I can, I think I have an idea of where it came from, but it's, it's a similar sentiment. Like I can draw them. They're fun to draw. They're cute in certain respects, but don't ever hand me one. 
you hand me one, I'm punching you in the face. Um, <laughs> All right. Yeah. Noted. <laughs> so, yeah. so I didn't mean that as a threat to you, but you know, don't. Ever. But it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you ever come near me with with a worm, we're gonna we're gonna throw throw hands. Um, now, okay, so tough guy in your Letterman jacket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is. Uh, don't show up. I'm the jock. Yeah. Uh, I will. I will. Uh, I'll give you the old one two. Uh, what's funny is I was a wrestler in high school and so like, uh, but I was not a good wrestler and I mm. was a skinny wrestler. So I was like the little, the little guy. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't even know if I've told it on here before, but I was, do you, do you know about high school wrestling? I mean, I, I know about it. Like how they have weight classes and things. Yeah, I do know that. Okay. Like I was the, weight or yeah. heavy weight. I don't know. That's for boxing. The, there's. Uh, 103, 112, 125, 132, 145, 154. Uh, I feel like it, and it goes up from there. Oh, yeah. I was, I I was, was going to say that. I wrestled 103 okay. freshman year, and I was mm -hmm. six foot two. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So you, you can imagine just the rippling muscles just, <laughs> just pouring off of me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just walking around, having trouble fitting through doors. It was it was a nightmare. Um, <laughs> I was I was so like awkward and whatnot. And I I look back and I can say like yeah I wrestled, but I also know in the back of my mind I'm like I was not the cool kid. <laughs> I had a Letterman jacket because I I probably got a lot of forfeits more than <laughs> more than uh, I won a lot of matches. You're like I don't want to break him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there were a lot of there were a lot of forfeits because there weren't a lot of people that wrestled at that weight class. Mm, High schoolers weight <laughs> So, I, uh, I was the, the freakishly tall, skinny, basically, yeah, it's a, am I supposed to wrestle this skeleton? That's the, that's probably the comment that was said quite often about me. Um, <laughs> but uh, what was I going to say? Oh, okay, back to the questions. Mm -hmm. You said what you don't like to illustrate or is, is not your favorite thing. Yeah. So what is your favorite thing? Uh... There's got to be something. Well, I do really, okay. It's less about the subject matter and more about how I work. I, I like to do backgrounds or, or, or just characters and stuff. But I like, I really like to do strong lighting. Like that's, that's my jam. Like I draw something like this, this right here, for example, this, this is fine. I like it. Cool. But when I go back and actually do some lighting on it it's like it's going to come to life in a way that i really get jazzed about so i like that kind of thing um i like humorous characters i don't get to do them very often like a lot of my books have been non-fiction yeah. almost all of them have been non-fiction and a lot of them have been around animals i did do oliver twist and a christmas carol and that's really you know, so character driven and i got to create some funny characters with that and that was fun um i don't know i also like drawing animals I, it's, it's so boring i like everything <laughs> yeah you're not you're not a I'm, gonna, I'm not. Okay, I'm not so. like a. Oh, I. Every, I can't draw hands. Like I'll, I. I will learn to draw anything. It's, you know, it's like you. That whole like, you teach a person a fish kind of thing. It's like once you learn, really learn, drawing, nothing really scares you. I think. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like what scare. Like obviously the bug thing we talked about. Like right. There's things I just bug, don't look at. But, but drawing. <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's something like drawing wise that I'm like. I mean, I will draw anything, but I will not do a good job of it. Uh, <laughs> what I mean by that uh, uh, is, uh, like, I will draw a bicycle, which is really hard to draw a bicycle, but I'm not going to draw a bicycle that looks real. And so, like, okay. I find the easy out in a way. Um, I, see, I have a problem with the, like, I will draw a real-looking bicycle. And sometimes I wish I was drawing the more inventive stylized bicycle yeah it's the, it's the way to go because then you can just draw however you want and no one goes hey that's not correct yeah i <laughs> i have a hard time with that like um just drawing like you know the picture i did was from 
a reference and you know sometimes i can sit down and just draw a character or or something i think i think drawing a character is fine drawing some animals is fine but i don't do it enough where i just draw from imagination i think because i do a lot of scenes there's usually just so much going into them and i'm like let's 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 get some references lined up yeah are you when you reference and you get all those those images are you someone who like I understand the idea of, of having a reference mm -hmm. for making sure that you're like not missing things, but are you the person who needs the reference because you're like, if I don't put this one item in or I don't, if I'm not accurate enough, it ruins the whole piece. Mm. No, I don't think I do that, but I guess I'm, I, <laughs> it's a tough question. I think, you know, especially because I do a lot of nonfiction, I am trying to reference things and to make things accurate. Yeah. Um, so it's sort of natural. It's just, it's become a natural part of my process. But that doesn't mean it's, I don't know. I want to, I also want to get away from it because I know that I have this huge library of items already stored in my head and I would like to leverage that more. Yeah. If that makes sense. No, that makes sense. Yeah. There's the, uh, you, you have this back catalog you got to get through at some point. I, um, I, I've always been the person who like, I will have reference nearby me at points, mm -hmm. but I rarely, if ever stick to it of any sort. And part of it is not just because of like, hey, I'm not good at that, <laughs> or I, I don't know how to deal with reference properly. A lot of it is actually, uh, if I stick too close to it, it doesn't feel like my style. And like, part of what I do is, or what I, I like to think that I do at least, is to sort of subvert uh, the, the reality and make things a little bit off to add sort of quirk yeah. to the work or whatnot. And so if I have a reference, I will intentionally like make something bigger than what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, because if I make it too close, then all of a sudden it's like, well, that doesn't look like the rest of my work when I'm purposely like throwing off, um, uh, you know, proportions or what have you. Yeah. Um, I, I there... really oh. appreciate that. And when I see other people do that, I really, really respect it, but it's not something that is, yeah. I don't know. It's just not something something I've explored as much as I would like to. No, I get I mean, I'm, get, I'm getting there. I mean, I'm exploring it all the time, but. But, but it's, it's the same thing. Like I, I look at people that do work that is like, like the equivalent you talked about lighting. Like yeah. I don't right. do lighting. Right. I do, I do, I, I guess I will do lighting, but I do the lightest hint of lighting. Mm -hmm. And it's purely just to make sure that like edges separate. It's mm -hmm. not, I'm gonna put the like, this spotlight on things and it's really going to glow like i was i was going to have a flashlight in this and i may make the part of the page white where the flashlight sits but it is not going to be glaring like the flashlight is lighting up the underside of their faces and like that's not the way that i operate for the most part mm -hmm. um, and so i'm always jealous when i see people do these amazing lighting situations like uh, uh christopher denise did the night owl book i don't know if you've seen that one um, and he has amazing lighting and, and design work in that. And it's like, totally love it. But I just know that it's like, if I were to try to do the same thing, I would get really frustrated and give up. Mm -hmm. at a certain point. Um, is there a thing that you pride yourself on? Now I'm just, I'm just hitting you with questions now. Mm -hmm. so just yep, just yep, buckle, in, buckle in. Is there a thing that you pride yourself on in your work? Uh, like, that is well, the thing that I, I think I do better than anybody oh, else. God. There's nothing I do better than anybody else, but um, in in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the kid wor lit world, okay. I would I would say that I do um, I have a better grasp on lighting and perspective and making the kind of environment that it feels like you could step into okay. more more than a than a lot maybe more than most. I okay. I do feel that makes sense. I feel, I feel I hate saying that. It feels a little weird, but I do feel 
confident in that. And I, and I see other people who, who do these things very well. So, you know, certainly not better than anybody else, but it is something that I do feel accomplished in. So from what I'm hearing, you're saying that you're better than everybody else. Better than everybody else. That everybody should get out of your way. Out of my way. Absolutely. It's, you're, you're hearing me correctly. I'm yeah. glad that we're I, on the same way. Yeah, I don't, I don't want you walking around here acting like you're, uh, you're, you're nothing. You, uh, no. Um, I, <laughs> I, that idea of like the, how to brag as an artist is always so hard. Like, I know it's part of the industry you have to go out there and say like yeah i can do this and you have to be uh really um not that you have to go out there and like undercut people of any sort but you do have to go and say like yes i am powerful enough and i can tackle this job that may be out of your wheelhouse on a regular basis um and you know it's the, it's the equivalent of uh do you know how to draw uh, a big rig and you go yep i i can and like you've never figured out how to draw a big rig in your life but you say yes because you know you can eventually tackle yeah, exactly. it uh, exactly i uh it's it's a a a challenge especially when thinking about sort of like style and things of that sort do you do you have, have a way that you sort of define your work um in your like whether it's a word that you use or something in your head where you're like this is quintessentially you uh, no <laughs> I think it's um, my style. It sometimes I think I feel like it gets like I have a harder time seeing. I historically uh, not as much anymore. I'm getting a better handle on it, but historically I've had a harder time seeing it than say other people. Some other people will be like, "Oh yeah, I recognize your art immediately," and I'll be like, "Really?" Because I will change up my materials and I yeah. will change up you know it's a different subject matter and maybe i'm drawing people differently or using different shapes and stuff but for me i think what i what i what it all comes down to is style is about the choices you make and it's not just about choosing to have a style it's about you know i'm going to draw these things this way because um, it, it's easier for me in some way. Like I'm, some people are gonna, like Anya, for instance, when I see her draw, she presses hard and she's, and, it, and her stuff looks like that and it's gorgeous. And then I'm like, because I just don't really have the patience for it. Yeah. And I know that I can go back and fix everything. And so, you know, I'm, so I, it's like the path of least resistance for me. Like that's kind of what style has become about. And because of that, I think, I think, I mean, I think that's, uh, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore, but basically I think my style is just naturally the things that have become the path of least resistance yeah. for me. <laughs> No, I, 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 that's but that's after a lot of trying. <laughs> so. Well, the statement the statement that you made it's the choices that you make. Yeah, is a really good way of putting it because that also doesn't imply that it's all visual, and Correct. it doesn't imply that it's you know a, a set. Uh, even if it is visual, that it's not like a symbol that you use regularly. Yeah. That's like oh well, that's the way that I draw eyes, or that's the way it's it's. Or even the color color palettes that you use yeah. or you know the subject matter as you as you said it's like it it's just baked in there it's just in there and and it makes sense when people say oh you know they ask how do you find your style and people are like well it just comes over time and that is the most annoying answer when you are trying to find your style yes. but you know if you know that it's the choices you make then you get to make those choices at any stage of your creative journey and just know that at some point you may make different choices <laughs> uh, I like the uh it is very annoying probably to hear that like well it's just naturally what comes to you and then you're going you know, like oh what is natural anymore and <laughs> what is what does it mean to to come to me i don't know and you stress out over all these little details but um i it, it's one of those things that i think is a, a battle for a lot of people especially who are starting mm -hmm. out to try to figure out how they fit in the industry and I look at your work and I do definitely see like there are consistencies that show up even though you might have you know you might see that 
uh, irregularity from book to book. Right. And it's the same thing for me. I know that it happens that like there is something consistent about the way that I operate. Mm -hmm. But I also, as the artist, I look and go like, well, that's clearly different. Like, how can yeah. they do? And, and uh, when you like, when you, for example, make the choice to use more, um, more, uh, uh, like cut paper shapes and do things like build things in a different way, you have to think like, what does this mean? For for my look, you know. Yep. <laughs> Will anybody recognize me? Well, they'd be like, and, and I've had people come up. You know, they they want to hire me, and they're like, "Well, I see that you have a lot of different styles." And, and then I have to, I don't know, just have say I will do whatever you, you want. Yeah. <laughs> have people not hired you because they thought there were too many styles? No, but, but whenever I get that question, it is a little like, or you know, when I get that observation, it's a little cringy. <laughs> because yeah. I mean, not cringy on from them, but I, I I just cringe because I'm like, all right, I need to, I, I guess, assuage their fears. Is that is that a word? Um, so make sure that they know that like they can rely on me to provide what they have hired me to. Yeah. So you know, I'll ask them like, what pieces of mine do you like, and then they'll tell me, and I will say, okay, <laughs> you know, yeah. no yeah. problem, we got it. Yeah. All I and need to know like, is the direction, and I've yeah. I've had. What's funny is I've had uh, recently, I had an illustration gig wherein, um, I, I may have mentioned this on here before, so anybody that's heard this before, please bear with it. But uh, I had a recent illustration gig wherein they said, hey, we want you to do this piece. And they gave me like, they, it was, uh, we saw these this piece that you made years ago that we really liked, and we would like it in that sort of aesthetic, or we want it to be in that same vein. Mm -hmm. And it was it was sort of a piece of like historical figures in literature. Mm -hmm. so they wanted something a little bit similar. And it's like, okay, awesome, great. But then I said, you know, well, I want to do collage. And when I made that piece, I was not doing collage. Mm -hmm. And they immediately wrote back and said like, well, we don't want it to be collage-y. Mm -hmm. We want mm -hmm. it to be more like these pieces, a mm -hmm. collection of pieces. And in it, like three of them were collage. <laughs> and so That's I'm funny. like, I had to inform them yeah. and say like, well, those are actually collage. And of course they're like, oh, these are? Okay, yeah. well, great. <laughs> okay, well, as long as you make it look like that, then we're good. And so I was able to mm -hmm. like, you know, meet the standard they wanted. Mm -hmm. But I think their assumption was, when I say the word collage, I meant something very different. But in reality, my collage is not all that different from my paint. Right, it's a different right. medium, but the sentiment is the same. Of like, I'm going to use it like a shape builder, mm -hmm. and I'm going to use texture and things of that sort. And I think they were taking it as like, well, I'm going to go cut out pictures for magazines. Right, and right. That. <laughs> That's not what my my mo is with all of this. Um, I just I, when you when you said I, like people said you had a lot of styles. I'm always worried of that same thing, <clears throat> but I had that happen once. Um, it was, uh, I was asked to do a, a book cover for nosy crow okay. and they asked for some, something that was a very dated piece for me. Mm -hmm. And I re returned something like, basically it was pretty, it was pretty flat and you know, it didn't have a large dimension or lighting and I returned something that was sort of a hybrid of what they had asked for and had a bit more, I don't know, a bit more dimension to it. And they, they said, no, we, we really want this other thing. And I was like, okay. So I gave them that. And then they went with another, they, they, it, first I didn't make it through the sales review or something. Yeah. And instead of coming back to me, they went to another artist oh. who did another thing that was actually way more in line with the stuff that I like to do now. And I was so disappointed. I mean, the, the co book cover is great. The artist did a fantastic job. I was just sad that I wasn't the one who got to do it. Yeah. I mean, I got paid anyway. That's fine. But <laughs> that's, so, that's frustrating yeah. to, to be so, so close to the thing or to have someone do something like that or to be yeah. pulled out at the last minute. Um, yeah. I, I you know, it, it happens, you know, I, it's fine. <laughs> I had a gig, I think it was probably, uh, I mean, this is a ways back. It was probably like 10 years back or something of the sort, maybe <laughs> even more than that. <clears throat> and I had just gotten out of grad school and I had like 
I had this new style I was really proud of that was sort of um, extra extra artsy. Let's put it that okay. way. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That thing. Um, and I had this company write me and say, hey, we have this idea for an editorial piece. We want this little like character floating in space. And can you can you make this image for us? And I was like, sure, that's that's fine. What uh, I was like, you know, out of curiosity, how did you find it? And mm -hmm. they told me that they found me. They said, oh, we got your postcard. And I was like, oh, which postcard? And they named the first postcard I ever did when I got out of college. Wow. It had been oh. 10 years prior. Absolutely a wild difference in style. Like, no <laughs> weird, like, you know, artsy fartsy thing I was trying to do when I got out of grad school. And then on top of that, the postcard that I had sent out had no website, had um, <laughs> a phone number, was the only contact information. It had my address on it, which I didn't live at anymore. Mm -hmm. The phone number was not the phone number I even used. <laughs> and I'm like, how oh, these people find yeah. it? Clearly, like, they just hopped on Google or something like that and found my website or something. So yeah. importantly, but I'm surprised they didn't look at my website and go, oh, this isn't what you do anymore. And so, you know, or like, this is the wrong person. Mm -hmm. But I remember being floored. And so, of course, there was a conversation of like, that's not the style I work in anymore. Mm -hmm. And they were like, okay, well, what do you do? And I had to show them. And they were, we had a conversation that basically came down to, I can split the difference. I can find ways to make something like what you want, but also sort of meet some of the needs that I have. Yeah. They, you know, as an artist or as a, right. uh, as, as the, the smart one in this conversation, whatever it may be. Um, and it came out okay in the end, but it's not something that showed up in my portfolio. I was not going to go post that online. And yeah. Everybody look at this thing because it just felt so foreign yeah. in a way, but you know, it was a paycheck and yeah, I, got, was, I got a lot uh, of those, yeah. a lot of the <laughs> never to be seen by the light of day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's, it's, you know, sometimes you take the job for whatever reason. In this case, it was, it was fine, but, um, I mean, sometimes I, you love the love the art. It just doesn't really fit with the yeah. you know, style you're trying to co convey to future clients. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And so it was it was a challenging one, but I, I just I had never heard of something that far back, and especially with that such such a dramatic style change. Mm -hmm. I was like floored that they even found me. Yeah. Like, so I always use it as an example for my students. Like, get a load of this, everybody. Um, and I show them or I, I reference it in a way where they can see like, oh, yeah, that's not anything like what you do now. Mm -hmm. um, as, as far as uh, uh, future projects, what's your uh, do, you, do you have something on your plate right now? Do you have books that you're working on? Uh, I'm actually well, I've got a book uh, coming up that I'm not working on yet. And I'm actually doing a puzzle right now, which is pretty fun and a really <laughs> unique. It, it's a learning experience because it's a unique set of needs to make up it's not just about making a big detailed picture which i didn't quite grasp until working okay. with this company this is this is straight up my like one of my dream jobs is to do puzzles because i love you know we're talking yeah. jigsaw puzzle right yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah absolute dream job for me i would love to do puzzles uh going forward in my career um, but now I need to know, like, okay, what are you talking about? Because to me, it sounds like, you know, like, oh, I always thought I was just like, you got to make a cool image that probably has some pattern or has some like colors that are in various spots to, to add challenge to it. But what are you uh, what? Well, it's about <laughs> thinking about how the um, person, how the people want to assemble the puzzle. And when you think about it, you know, Generally, people a lot of times you'll assemble the edge first. Yeah. But another because you find all the flat pieces, cool. But another thing that people do is they'll collect all the colors, all these zones, you know. And so you have to have a clear like, oh well, this tan, this particular tan color is clearly related to this particular tan color on the puzzle box, and it is different. It is uniquely identifiable to the tan that you use in this other part of the box. Yeah. And um, so if you're not, not careful about that, what can happen? Because um, there is a lot of variation in puzzle pieces, but there are, there are often, especially with bigger puzzles, puzzle pieces that are pretty close. Mm. 
And if you have one puzzle piece that has the same color as the correct one and you sort of fit it in, then the other one won't work. And the person doesn't, the person that is, you know, doing the puzzle does not realize this is happening in the moment. And then at the end, they have an unfinished puzzle and they can't make the piece fit. And it's just like, they you ruined their puzzle. <laughs> like now it's going to get a bad review because clearly it didn't come with all the pieces. So I never, just, I never would have thought of that in particular. Did they go over that with you? Did they? Oh like, yeah. Yeah. Here's how this works. Yeah. This is what we need to get better at. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So I gave them stuff, you know, I gave them stuff and, and I had stuff like what you're saying. I had stuff that was detailed, but like if you have a line of detail that sort of extends, or, or pattern, for example, and the pattern goes over multiple pieces, people are going to have a real, real hard time figuring out which piece goes where and assembling it, and it's just not going to be. It's not going to be fun. So interesting. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. It's a. It's an interesting thing. Now, I wonder if that changes at all for like the type of like. There's certain puzzles that I'm. I'm I'm a snob when it comes to to how I operate with puzzles. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I'm I'm the. Uh, are, are you the kind that does like the the gradient puzzles? I would, I would love to do one of those. Okay, so then um, it's going to be a different situation for you. <laughs> yeah, it but, does. It really does depend on like, you know, the 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 puzzle company and what their viewers are expecting. Are you the players are expecting from their puzzle experience? I'm I'm also the type of person though that. I don't look at the box. I think that's. Mm. I think if you're going to do the puzzle, like if you have a guide, I mean, you might as well just like have someone tell you exactly where stuff goes at that point. So to me, that's cheating. <laughs> so I stay away from it. <laughs> okay, I see. I see where you're going with and this. And so, I see. Like, yeah, uh, the mm -hmm. idea of like having pieces no that don't quite. It's going to have fun close. here, okay? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I'm also the type of person who wants to do a puzzle in a single sitting if I can. Mm. So I I oh. I would stay up to the night in order to get a like uh, obviously how, how many like puzzle that. pieces are we talking? Yeah, I mean if it's a crazy number, then yeah, it might take a couple days or whatever. Yeah. But if it is a puzzle that is you know, uh, I'm, I don't even know what numbers make sense, but let's say it's a thousand piece okay. puzzle. Okay, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, that's that's a night. That's, that's night. That is like I would stay up late just mm -hmm. to get it done, and part of that is OCD. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, fair enough. Finish it, but I have a, a puzzle app on my phone, and I or not on my phone, on my uh, iPad. Mm -hmm. So I've probably done it's a jigsaw puzzle thing. I have probably done a total of like since maybe December. Mm -hmm. I've probably done about I'm gonna guess upwards of 200 puzzles. Okay, so what you're telling me is that the puzzle that I'm going to work on is GG too easy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just, you're wimping out on it. Get like, good, noob. There's there's, there's, a, there's a couple puzzles out there where it's like the same color on both sides. Mm -hmm. And so like the back is the same color oh. and black color. No, that's, no. Oh, my god. That's funny. Like, that's that's a puzzle that would be fun to work on. Or mm -hmm. uh, there's one that's out there that's clear. <laughs> So it's like okay. plastic and it's like, to me, that's even funnier. Cause again, you don't know what side is up. You don't mm -hmm. know anything of the sort. And then you have to deal with whatever's underneath the puzzle. Mm -hmm. So like you're not looking at the, the flat color. Um, like those are the kind of things that I would love to do. I, I don't do them often because I'm not, um, I'm not completely insane. But, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I, um, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a matter of, of like time management for me that I, I don't jump yeah. into those, but I can very easily get lost in doing a puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, I I think I mean I, I kind of get that like if if I'm in it I can't get out of it. Um, yeah. So I have a my husband's cousin gets a lot of the New York Times no the New Yorker puzzles so it's like New Yorker covers mm. and we just went over to visit once and she had it out on the table they were kind of working on it and. I couldn't look away. Like, I know we were supposed to be engaged in the conversation, <laughs> but I, and I'm trying to pay attention, but I'm also like, oh, I can put that red piece there. <laughs> yep. and I, and, but that was a tough puzzle. I think in the time I was there, in the time I was actively 
trying to look like I wasn't really trying to do the puzzle, I probably got like, I don't know, like a couple dozen pieces in and they were, they were like, oh, cool. Thanks for helping. <laughs> I'm, I don't know. You, on the other hand, <laughs> probably would have done the whole thing and been like, get out of my yeah. face. I'm busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm also like my wife probably hates this, but um, I at the every day I have to do a certain amount of like puzzles that are not necessarily jigsaw puzzles, mm -hmm. but like word puzzles. Oh, yeah. And so like Wordle, I, I do Wordle. I do the New York Times mini crossword. Mm -hmm. I do like I love crosswords. I got six. I got sick of Wordle, but yeah five or six like things that New York Times puts out mm -hmm. two other games that are word games some of those like you got to connect and find words in it mm -hmm. and then this other one that's called um oh, what is it called I don't remember what it's called it's one where they break up words into like little pieces so like if you have the word like telephone it might be te and then another tile is lep and another one is ho and another one's ne hmm. uh, and they have like seven words oh, that's what it's called oh. seven words there you go Okay. <laughs> and you, you have to essentially figure out what the words are. I've gotten to the point, and they give you a little clue. So, like, mm -hmm. telephone, it might say, like, Alexander Graham Bell invented uh, it or whatever. Um, yeah. But I've gotten to the point where I don't even look at the clues anymore. Mm -hmm. I just look at the letters and can, like, form the words. And I've trained, and I'm not saying I'm, a, like, check out how amazing I am uh, <laughs> uh, or anything of the sort, but uh, I do these puzzles so often and I have to do them in order to feel okay for the day an OCD mm -hmm. thing in order to feel okay I have to get these done and it means that I'm like I see words all the time now uh -huh. I, my wife says OCD because you have to do all the puzzles every day before you go to sleep uh -huh. and I will stay up late to get them all done if need be like it's the same thing as the jigsaw puzzle side of things but man it's I will go back to say that like even though you say it's not as easy as what I wanted it to be with a jigsaw puzzle, I just mm -hmm. do a jigsaw puzzle would be cool. That's like just my artwork. Yeah, I, it would be. Uh, it's, it's always nice to see your art on stuff. Like, oh, it's like validating. Um, I'm going to talk about puzzles though. Like puzzle games. Sorry, okay. not Wordle. Okay, I play this one that I'm pretty obsessed with. It's called Sherlock and it's just it's like you can get the app i think on you know iphone on your apple store or whatever yeah. uh, and you can and it's also available for android but it's it's just logic puzzles and it is the um, i'm sorry to the creator of it it is the ugliest interface and i really want to just go in and and make this with like nice art but i'm like i love it like i love it so much that i've gone back and i've created my own rules so that I can make it more challenging. When you say yeah. logic puzzle, what do you mean by a logic puzzle? Do you mean like, you know, um, Joe has a red hat yes. and lives their neighbor next door. Yes. And you have to yes. like mark off the grid. It's not, a, it's not that kind of grid. It's a little bit different. Like it, it's not an up and down. And if you look at it, if you look at the interface, it is bonkers because you have to, like, it's all like, it's, so, it's the same thing, but it's all done in a kind of shorthand. Okay. There's no, um, there's no, you know, Joe has a red hat. It's just like, here's an image with a tiny arrow next to another image, or like this one image is blocked out and you have to, you start to understand what the shorthand is for it. And then you start putting it in the grid and you can do the thing where you like with the logic puzzles where you X out, well, you know, Joe can't be here because yeah. that doesn't fit. But the thing I've started doing is I've started instead of like I'm not Xing anything out. I'm only selecting the right answers. Oh. So I have to do it in my head. <laughs> nice. See, that's that's yeah. the jigsaw puzzle though. It's, it's the like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It is. It's, I can't cheat and, and do put it down so I can like reference it and make corrections. Right, right. 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 Sudoku, Sudoku I do with I do with pen. Oh, because uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't like the idea of erasing. Yeah. If yeah. you erase, then you ruin the puzzle and you have to start a new one. <laughs> like that's my, my go-to. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So not, it's the same. Not even <laughs> remotely disturbed, are we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. This is, uh, this is how we, how we live life. Um, <laughs> I, the idea of like, like people that there's this, um, I mentioned it last week too, but 
that a lot of kid illustrators um, listen to like murder podcasts. And it, it's the, the escapism in a way of like not having to draw cute or talk about cute things, listen to cute things mm. and all that stuff that you get away and listen to a murder thing is fun. Um, but I also think that like, there's part of that is, is a, a release of like being in a world that's so subjective to have something like a puzzle that's very objective mm -hmm. and like there is a right or wrong answer. Oh gosh, part, yes. Part the, like, that's what I like to talk about design. Yeah, it is yeah. weird. It is a mental, I, um, it does a number on you, I think, to be in a business that is so subjective. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, yeah. Like, there, there's like, I mean, that's a theory, of course. There's, there's no, no one ever said, hey, this is how this works. But I think that's part of it for me is like, mm -hmm. it, it becomes a little bit mindless in a way, even though there is a challenge and there is something mental there it's i'm not i'm flexing a different part of my brain mm -hmm. in those puzzles um the logic ones i've never been like super keen on mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm i don't know what it is that like challenges me with those but i i think it's part of it is um i'm afraid to make mistakes in those <laughs> like i i think you know it's equivalent of like my son right now is really into rubik's cubes Mm -hmm. He has a really good time of foreseeing how you, if you turn it this one way, that it will allow you to do something later that you need to do. You know, that, that forethought. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah. I can do that with chess. Mm -hmm. I can't do that, though, with, um, with a Rubik's Cube. And it's similar, like those logic puzzles. I almost need a, I have a hard time visualizing what you're talking about with that idea of like, like doing it the way you mm -hmm. Do it where it's it's mm -hmm. you just have to get it right on the first try yeah kind of thing i can't i don't have the faith in myself to be able to do that i think that if way. if like i couldn't do it until i'd been playing this game long enough so it, yeah. it's a, it's a muscle i yeah. was able to build up i think it's a muscle that can be built up is there um are, are you into like the would you ever do one of those uh i guess it's not really a logic puzzle but when you said the like those kind of things that made me think of those uh, like murder mystery dinners where you show up and there's actors and you have to solve the murder. I put one on for my younger cousins once a long, long time ago. <laughs> I do. I do love mysteries. Okay. I, I, yeah, I do. You made a dinner plan where people pretended to be dead and. Yes. I think, I don't remember. I think my, I think I made my aunt be dead. I think she was, she was happy to be dead. Yeah. The <laughs> chatty one the one that you wanted to quiet down for the night wait <laughs> like, i don't remember I, this you can you can be quiet tonight that's my <laughs> that's that <laughs> uh, yeah i think she just wanted to lay down rather than like do whatever craziness we were doing <laughs> <laughs> that you're you're sleeping on in the corner mm -hmm. um the uh like those sound interesting to me the the escape rooms oh, i did one once and it was horrible okay well, <laughs> So, um, so this was when I was living in San Francisco and it was one of the first ones in the country, if not the first one, I'm not sure. And I was so excited about them because I liked doing escape room games and it, um, it, I think it, it just had some bugs to work out and I, like, I was so hyped going in. Like we went in with a bunch of coworkers and before they even finished giving the spiel, I was like, hold on, I'm going to turn out the lights because my spidey sense was tingling. And of course there was something glow in the dark and I'm like, I had a clue. And they were like, no one ever figured that out that fast before. So I felt so good. But then <laughs> when we got into it and they had a lot of red, red herrings, one of which was a logic puzzle so we have one hour and I'm sitting here trying to like speed through this, like this grid thing and, and, and only to find out that that was a waste of time that it uh, had nothing to do yes. with anything. And then even though we solved all these puzzles, we only, what we really needed was one piece, which was an Allen key, which was in like, you know, how, how like, um, like, uh, uh, coolers will have, I don't know, coolers are inside. Insulated. So there's like some space in between the top of the lid and the bottom of the lid, basically. We did not know that you could unscrew the, this lid and actually open it 
And there was no clue that you could do that because nothing rattled because they taped the Allen key in. So it was just like this random thing that you had to find that you had to know came apart and there was no, there was no discoverability baked into it. So I was like, really? You, instead of doing this logic pu puzzle that went to nowhere, you could have done a puzzle that said, hey, open up this thing. <laughs> I, so I was mad. I was mad. <laughs> I, could never, I, could, I thought you were going to say at first, like, it was the first one ever and they hadn't put in an exit or, like, <laughs> something, something, like, really important. That they, I mean, uh, we got really close, but it was just, like, I don't know. Like, it just didn't feel figure outable. And I don't, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm there to try and, like, <laughs> try to escape. Yeah. <laughs> like, not be stuck into a... It the second room going like well now what <laughs> that sort of ruined the fun of the whole yeah the, the only one that i ever did i think was uh, like you're in egypt and this is a tomb and you gotta and it was all like again sort of logic-y kind of based puzzles mm -hmm. uh, but i don't remember all that much about it i don't remember it being all that fun yeah i think it was fun because of the people i was with not fun because of the the challenge mm -hmm. that, that if that makes any sense uh, I think those things, they seem easy to make oh, or, you know, you're like, I like puzzles. I could do it. Yeah. But I think there's actually, you need a lot of play testing. Yeah. You know, it's like any game. You need a lot of play testing to, to get the feel right. I, um, now, okay. Going back to, you did that, that, uh, or you're working on a puzzle. Have you done a puzzle before? I did, but. I'm not sure how good it was, given how much I've learned from this yeah. company. And have you? Yeah. Have they all been jigsaw puzzles, or have you had the opportunity to do anything other than jigsaw puzzles? No, just jigsaw puzzles. I, um, you mean of of puzzles as far as puzzles go? Just jigsaw puzzles. Jigsaw. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just my wife. My wife keeps saying that I should do some like mazes and things of the sort, mm. and she's probably right. Mm. To be honest, like that is probably something of value for me to work on because um, generally she is right. I did um, one for a portfolio once, a maze for like yeah, a, a kid thing. I don't. I don't know exactly what I would do with it. The challenge is like, if I'm going to do a maze, I don't want to do like just a maze. I want to do something that's like. I don't want to say wildly different, but I want to do something that like challenges the convention of a maze. And so like, it's, it's, uh, how do I put this? Like, uh, not just a point A to point B kind of situation. I think it's part of it is like, well, the, the conceptual editorial person in me goes, if I'm doing something for a magazine, that's a maze like that, I got to mix it up and do something wild that no one's expecting. And like, in reality, that's probably not what they want in the first place. Uh, they want something a little less, challenging or or maybe a little bit more formulaic but uh, well then you got to just do it yourself right and then you like hey look what i could do hire me for this yeah and, yeah and then they go why did you draw a maze that has you know some weird esoteric <laughs> concept <laughs> thrown in the middle of it like, i don't know it seemed cool at the time um is there uh so I don't know. I think I asked you like dream job. And I think that may be where this, this conversation started. Um, I don't know that you did actually. Oh, okay. okay so dream job. Um, thanks for, I thanks for the easy out. So I could say, yes, that's, I, yeah, I, I, I would like, I, I think my, well, it's pretty obvious, but I would like to write my own picture book. I have written some dummies and I have done a very bad job of sending them to publishers. <laughs> I think my my next step is getting a new agent, though. I I left my illustration agent, and I want to ah. pursue a literary agent because I want to do the the book thing. I was gonna say but, I, I I remember looking up when we were doing the ads and stuff, and I remember looking up and trying to find your agent, and I was like, oh, you know, I have an agent, yeah, which is you know for for the kid lit world is kind of a an odd thing just in general, um, but. Uh, the fact that you're, you know, changing agents or whatnot makes sense. Uh, was your agent before just a, a traditional art rep? I was rep by Lilla Rogers. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 She, she does kid lit stuff every once in a while, but that's not her special. She so. does. Yeah, she does. Um, they do kid lit. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, after spending some time with some um, kid lit folks, uh, and, and by folks, I mean like you know, 
uh, from all walks of life, like uh, agents and art directors and authors and stuff. I yeah. just felt like I really wanted to focus on that 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 area. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. I mean, she. I also see her as like a uh, uh, surface design. Yeah. Is yeah, a, you a, know a that for her. <laughs> I I sort of got. Um, I became one of her artists a little by accident because I also thought that was the case too. And a friend of mine who does surface design had entered the competition, like back, you know, at the time I got pulled in, there was a big contest and a friend had entered the contest and gotten some work because she made it through the first round. Yeah. So I was like, okay, yeah. I was like, there's no way I'm going to be, you know, you know, picked up for this. Uh, but heck, you know, it's promotion. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a shot. And then it turned out that every one of the, of the assignments was book related. So I was like, Oh, uh, well, I might have a shot at this. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I did, and it, it was great for a while, but you know, it's time to move on and do something else. Yeah. Yeah. I just, like I know she does a variety of different things, but I, when I, especially when she, or when I first started out, I remember looking at her as like, Oh, that would be an agent. But I also thought like, I wanted to do stuff that was maybe, um, now this is when it was like me wanting to be edgy and, and artsy fartsy. I was like, I mm -hmm. want to be way more like conceptual and like challenging and whatnot. And her stuff tended to be relatively cute. Yeah. Like, you, the, you, that that's sort of a, a a big part of it you know you need i mean with any agent artist relationship i mean you could be an extremely talented and proficient illustrator but if your your skills don't match up with the with the clients that your agent has it's not going to be a good fit if the if the agent doesn't know how to sell what you want to do you know it's not going to be a good fit yep. Yep, yeah. totally. That's a, I mean, I was actually just talking about agents today to students and like the equivalent of looking at, uh, I won't name the agencies, but there was one agency that, um, there's an art agency and they have uh, different sections and in their kids section, they had, you know, five different agents for about, I'm going to say 150. <laughs> Run away. Art <laughs> Run away. I know. And I'm like, uh, yeah. That seems crazy. And then I went yeah. with their uh, their cards and greeting section, mm -hmm. and they had 150 artists, roughly, and they had one agent that repped that side. Now, mm. of course, their agency is big enough that they have like different agents that can deal with more than just a singular. You know what I mean? It's not a it's yeah. not one off. Yeah. But still, the, there is part of me that immediately saw that and was like, "Ooh, I don't I don't think I'd be willing to take that." that leap to something like that because it just feels like you're going to be constantly battling this idea of like are they paying attention to me even mm -hmm. but i talked to and i know people. i know a lot of people who deal with that yeah. and and with with lila i think you know um with her agency it it was i think i had not not including lila but like that that active agents i think i had two i think there were two for oh maybe it maxed out at about 40 then and I could I could just get in touch with them if I needed if I had a question they yeah. emailed me and it that was amazing and sometimes you'll see agents where it's like one person dealing with 40 artists or um or I think what you said it's like five agents for 150 200 people and it's just like they're not they're they're gonna have difficulty having time for you yeah you know that's, or that's yeah if they tough. have time for you they have it for a short period of time then they got to move on to someone else and so you have yeah. to you come back around into their view mm -hmm. and it's not to say that those are bad agents 100 percent for anybody that's looking at an agent yeah. but you just have to know that if you want that personal attention there's probably a number that needs to be better i also told the students so you don't want an agent that only has one person because that means they don't know how to rep uh, <laughs> one person like, yeah they have one artist underneath their uh their repertoire or their, yeah. uh, their I don't think I've ever seen no, that. <laughs> I haven't either, but I'm saying yeah. I was, that was yeah. Uh, the opposite. Example, yeah. Yeah. You, you balance. don't, you don't yeah. want to, yeah. You don't want someone that's going to go and say, Hey, like, mm -hmm. I don't know how to rep. So all I can get is one artist under my belt. Mm -hmm. And then it's a challenge of like, are you the, are you 
too close to everybody else in the agency? Are you right? You know, yeah. separated enough? Are you the the like weird random style that no one that doesn't connect with who they hire normally? Um, uh, there's so many things that go into it that's not as simple as just like an agent. If I can get an agent, perfect. That's all I need. That's mm -hmm. that's probably the the like the wrong mindset to go into that with. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm doing this crazy thing where I'm I'm actually gonna query, and I've had I've had like uh, four agents reach out to me in the last I guess since folktale week so since the end of november yeah and that's wonderful like that's like that makes me feel like i'm in a pretty good position yeah <laughs> um and and just to be clear if like one of my favorite agents like just messaged me out of the blue i'd be like okay cool let's yeah i'm ready to sign but for the most part i don't know i want the experience experience of making sure that I find the agent that's the right fit for me yeah. not that not you know the other way around where the agent is looking for the artist that well, fits them does that make sense yeah I know and, and especially like in an industry like I think probably you're at a point where like yeah you can you can make that uh, that decision yeah but then there's like the the person who just you know is trying to break in and they get an agent that writes them and says Hey, I'm interested in your work, and they potentially are going to go. Yes, finally, I got an agent. Yeah, it's, it's validating, hard. right? It's hard in that situation to say yeah. no, or to say, like this isn't the right fit. But in reality, like there are so many times. I mean, I'm surprised, honestly, uh, how often people switch agents in any of the art industries. Um, huh. Not, not because it's it's. No, I just shocking. don't know that many that have, and I get I always a little bit worried. <laughs> Well, mm -hmm. no, I, I hear of people that do it and then I'm always like, oh, but don't you just want to stay with the person? And, and sometimes it's just like literally like it's time to move on. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, it's not the perfect fit for everybody. And that's that's OK. Um, and I'm also the type of person, though, in general, that like wants to, to stay the course. Yeah. And I don't want to rock the boat. Um, but I also know that, you know people change and sometimes moving uh, uh oh my wife is uh says sorry i just know she says i wanted to say that i love jennifer's pup's name being frisket oh yeah is that in reference to the oh, yeah. art material yeah nice nice very few people know that <laughs> so, now if you named your pup liquid frisket or is it frisket uh like the sheet frisket that you're talking about there <laughs> Come well, on, I, specific for me. Yeah, no, I was definitely thinking liquid, but <laughs> so she gave me liquid frisket. It's fine. Okay. Well, there's when I when I was going through high school, I just changed the subject dramatically here. But when I was going through <laughs> high school, we did a lot of airbrushing at the time. Oh, okay. Uh, I never there, was, that. there was frisket that you would use for um, for that, and it was like a big mm -hmm. sheet of plastic that you put out and cut out the shapes you needed. Yeah, um, I've seen that. I haven't used it though. Uh, okay, what were we talking? Oh, agent wise. Um, the uh the the other thing that i you know sort of surprises me a lot in this situation too is just how many agents there are and how how irregular finding an agent is and yeah. not in the sense of it takes forever but it just isn't as like uh written in some sort of manual somewhere like this is the way you get an agent well, everybody has their own like method of submissions too so yeah yeah like, like well enough most people i know have landed agents not by just querying but by doing a a you know being at some event and they just happen to run into oh. it or oh, yeah it's, it's you know you hear all these stories about you got to query 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 and that does happen but so many people i know have had it where it's like sort of this irregular well i was going down the subway stairs and i bumped into this person i didn't know who they were and they said hey i recognize you know it's like all oh, these Whoa, it's like, yeah wow <laughs> not, not that that's a real story right there but i feel like it's always that kind of story i was ready to believe yeah it. i was like who is this famous artist you're talking about <laughs> no, 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 not so much. um are there um are there agents in particular that you're like aiming towards right now or is it 
sort of a, a plethora of folks and you're going to see what comes in. Well, so I have um, agents that I feel like right now, just from knowing them in the ecosystem that I would be very happy with. But I also want to look more because, you know, there are a lot of agents out there that aren't, you know, they're more busy dealing with like with publishers and promoting their clients than they are putting stuff on Instagram. Yeah. So there, there are people there who are doing amazing work that aren't necessarily as visible. So I just want to do a little more digging before I embark, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the same sentiment as, like, saying, um, uh, you know, just because someone has a lot of followers on Instagram means that they're, that they're a great artist. Making money. Yeah, they make money. <laughs> totally yeah. not true. Yeah. And so, like, sometimes it's, it's you got to find the right fit. Uh, and that may be someone who doesn't have a ton of clients, or it may be someone who is relatively new, but they have the drive that mm -hmm. you need that goes with it. Um, I see a, a JB Wright nine nine six three says, "What's uh, favorite sources of inspiration?" Um, like, are there artists in particular that you look at right now and you're like, "Oh man, this is if I could just do what they do." Uh, I'm well. I guess right now, not so much. I'm I'm avoiding that. I'm avoiding okay. other artists. Uh, intentionally I mean there's still some that are in my you know in my view yeah. that I see and I I love like I have my favorites for sure and I'm happy to name thank you yeah, yeah you're, you're welcome, welcome. yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I, I think I'm just trying to get my inspiration not from the illustration ecosystem at this point yeah I don't know. I, I want to, I, I suppose I want to stand out. I want to be different. Of course I want to be different. Um, <laughs> yeah. You say from, not from this ecosystem, does that mean that you're like... Like contemporary kid lit illustrators on Instagram. Yeah. Like there, there are people that I absolutely are going to follow and engage with. Obviously, you know, my, my bees. Um, <laughs> there, are, there are a lot of people in this, you know, that I just like, <laughs> consider friends and I, and I want to see what they're doing but saying your bees threw me i'm like <laughs> like i forgot about that conversation I was like, what do you mean like so long ago honeybees? Yeah. And I'm I, honeybees. I, yeah i couldn't understand but gosh yeah. you know yeah I, I understand the sentiment too though like the equivalent of uh and i you know it came up before i even started the night that someone asked about uh rebecca green mm -hmm. like rebecca yeah. green's work is amazing right. I also worry that if I were to ever try to follow in her footsteps or, or like get too inspired by her. Oh God, I see it all, all the time. You see it all the time, don't you? <laughs> just like, oh, oh, I know. And I just, I feel, I feel for those artists because they're doing, you know, sometimes they're doing really nice, beautiful work. And I'm just... But it for doesn't those in feel snow, like theirs. Yeah. It feels like I'm looking at Rebecca, you yeah. know? You're looking yeah. at sort of a, not necessarily a knockoff. And I don't think they're doing it with the worst intentions or anything. No, of course not. But it, it you, and, and like, you can see it. I can see it. Like, there's a specific eye. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, and like, the, the shapes of, of of limbs and, like, the, the paint style. Like, the way colors are, like, limited and blended. It's just, yeah, it's, it's. it's <laughs> again like, like i think part of it is uh naivete in some senses some of it is just people aren't paying attention they're getting too close to the original source it's also um, you know i mean because she she <coughs> shares a lot of stuff through her what it was it called dessert club yeah so i think you know that's that's great more power to her she should be um you know earning within her her audience i think that's fantastic and if people are wanting to support her that is absolutely great too and if they want to learn from her fantastic but do they want to do that and also create a, an original portfolio that's going to get them work and let them stand you know in the this realm yep. within their own right i, I guess then it, then it starts to get a little challenging so 
I mean, I, I'm of the mindset, especially like when I work, people sometimes will say like, who's my inspiration? And I do have inspirations. I do have people that I look at um, to draw from, but on a regular basis, it is not from Kidlit. Yeah. It is from uh, exactly. their sources. Yeah. And I, I do get inspired by Kidlit people, but it's, it's because of that fear of like, am I gonna walk too close to this, or fly too close to the sun mm -hmm. uh, with some of those artists I tend to gravitate towards, okay, let me find someone that is outside the range of it and say, can I pull that work back in? Yeah. Or the type of, um, I have to think here for a second, do I need a thumb? Uh, uh, no, I think I can get away without. Um, sorry, I'm like trying to cut out this little hand mm -hmm. on this and I wasn't sure if I, I needed this. I can't wait to see what you're doing. <laughs> Uh, um, Professor Martin Salisbury has something he said in uh, the book Drawing for Illustration. Do you know that one? Yeah. So one with um, Isabel Arsenault did the yep. cover art for it. It's beautiful. I can't remember what it was, but there's a passage somewhere and I can find it and share it. That is just like really, I think, eloquently talks about making sure your references are not from your peers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. one of the statements a, a fellow illustrator that I used to teach with always said, and I've said it on here before, so again, anybody who's listening has heard this before, um, that you need to look at your influences' influences. Yeah, I've, I've seen that, yeah. Yeah, remove yourself mm -hmm. one step away from um, the, the source material. I also think yeah. just turn off Instagram for yeah. a bit. Um, like, clearly, clearly I am... You know, there are references that show up in my work that potentially are like maybe hint at maybe a little too close to certain people, and, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that that's uh, the worst thing in the world for that to happen, but I also know that um, I, I need to make sure that my brand, and oh, I'm going to brand, I need to make sure that my style is different enough that I'm not um, treading the same water because why would they come to me? If they go to this person who's been doing it and is an expert in it, right? For years. I mean, there are um, times you know you like you can get work. I I believe um, doing stuff like Rebecca Green because Rebecca Green is busy. Work, yeah. right? Like you can. Like there is a small subset of people who are going to get the work that she can't take on or isn't taking on now. You know. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I just ruined this little boy's cheeks. Oh well. Is there? <laughs> Is there um, artists outside or things that you look at for inspiration that are outside of art? Um, oh, outside of art. Uh, yeah, film, absolutely. Uh, I watch, my husband and I watch a lot of films. We have the, the Criterion channel, so we see all kinds of crazy old stuff. Okay. And so what is that? So name, name me some movies. What's your, what's your favorite movie? <sighs> Favorite movie? I really, I really, <laughs> I really like Blade Runner. Um, it is fantastic composition. I think the cinematography is. Good. See, this is something I really like about film is, especially as opposed to kid lit, because with kid lit you have these stories that are, you know, you you don't have that many images with which to to tell a story so yeah. often you find yourself doing these really sweeping scenes i certainly find myself doing really sweeping scenes trying to get like all of the elements in there but then you with with movies you have sweeping scenes you have all of these settings and stuff but at any given point it's generally going to be a close-up of like two people or maybe one person in an object and and it's going to be framed in such an artful way and i think just going and looking at how that's happening and sketching it it is really useful it's just really inf uh, really interesting information to have and to be able to call upon when you're looking to create compositions yeah the other thing that i think that it does that you can't do in picture books is you can't have quiet moments and what I mean by that is you can't, like in a picture book, to convince a publisher that I need to have 20 spreads where the nothing happens yeah. in order to build suspense, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're mm -hmm. going to go, no, 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 that doesn't work with our budget. Yeah. Uh, and 
yet in film you can have these like you know just scenic moments that don't move the story forward and are just about the quiet yeah and you know that's that is a challenge in in publishing just because every page costs money and i guess this yep. can be said about film but they just have more minutes to play with or they have more real estate essentially to play with yeah. than what a, yeah. a picture book yeah. does um so you like you like smart films then oh no i like i like films <laughs> okay. i have plenty of films that are not smart like like i don't know okay what, what are other Fast and the furious oh, no. no i've never seen those what <laughs> i've never seen those okay okay maybe uh let's let's go one step closer to smart <laughs> no that's not true like i love things like um i don't know Trading Places is a good movie. Like I like all those, like Vacation, like European Vacation and Christmas yeah. Vacation. Like those are good fun. I love I love Muppet movies. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a lot of a lot of variety. But yes, I also am in love with um, Agnes Varda, uh, the director, and and Jacques Tati, and um, yeah, there's just room for. Oh gosh, gosh, yeah. Speaking of them, like Jacques Tati and Agnes Varda. Uh, just phenomenal, phenomenal visual storytellers. Yeah. I just, yeah. You, yeah. Oh my God. Have you seen Delicatessen? Yes, I have. Did you yeah. like that? I did. Okay. I was going to say that's, that's another one of those ones I sort of chalk up in that sort of like visual, like it's the visuals and the like narrative is so interesting and the, the, the sort of mm -hmm. like plot mm -hmm. building Delicatessen and uh, City of Lost Children. Are, are two amazing ones, but I don't think I'm going to tell you. City of Lost Children. It's, it's in the same vein. Okay. It's the same director. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But I'm going to tell you right now mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you do need to see, and I know it may be hard <laughs> to put up, but you do need to see Fast and the Fast and Furious series. Um, <laughs> not, not like, I'm not saying it's a, a good movie in the sense of like, it's, you know, the best filmmaking in the world or anything of the sort, but the sheer spectacle yeah of that movie and the the over the top nature of it is absolutely fascinating to watch especially if you start and you see the whole series mm -hmm. like my wife and i are you know we we were animators and we loved film for a long time and whatnot and mm -hmm. we prided ourselves on like we're gonna go see the artsy fartsy stuff we went to that <laughs> the movie theater in town that wouldn't just show the blockbusters they'd show the the oh, yeah. french director that those uh, yeah i've been there right? uh, <laughs> yeah. but we also love those like over the top campy things too to the point we're in uh we will go to the like fast and the furious to watch the the train wreck mm -hmm. that is, and we got hooked on it and like i'm i am dead set on seeing that next fast and the furious All right because it is so like it's just you can't fathom how wild the thing is until you're in it um okay well this is i'm just telling you this is probably i don't know does this count like i like because now you know he's a was a bong joon ho right like now he's an oscar winner so i don't know but like before parasite there was um what what you want to call it um snow piercer which is just <laughs> wild <laughs> and amazing and i loved it so i don't know if we're talking about that kind of well it's like just wild right yeah and pure explosions I, mean, I imagine but you've seen train to busan yeah yes yes yeah that's like it's so over the top it's just like inundates you like there's just no there's no rest yeah of sort. like there's no moment to breathe because it's just action 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 the mm -hmm. same thing in the fast and the furious however it's all done with cars right. Right, <laughs> <laughs> and so like getting to that point where it's just like it's so over the top because there's so many little like cars flying around and explosions and stuff that you're just uh overwhelmed by um uh to me it's it is uh is not a movie that i ever thought i would be interested in but i'm not gonna say you have to watch it but i also will tell you that but you already did I, say I, I had to watch it so <laughs> um, i also would highly recommend a movie that I probably watched more than any other movie in my life. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, Biodome. <laughs> I, I have seen Biodome probably upwards, upwards of like 30 to 40 times uh -huh. because it is so dumb. So like this is coming. So if I'm saying Fast and Furious, realize mm -hmm. that's part of it. I had a okay. friend in college that uh, we watched a lot of movies and we were silly and, and whatnot. But there was a night where we watched a movie called, um, oh, shoot, what was it? It was called, uh, uh, it was a, a uh, oh, I can't think of her name now. Guinan from. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry, Whoopi, uh, Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg. It was a movie, Theodore Rex may have been the name of the movie or something like that. Hmm where it's a dinosaur that is a cop. And <laughs> the movie was so bad that Whoopi Goldberg, before it even filmed, she tried to get out of it. She had signed the contract and they took her to court and forced her to make Aww. the movie. Aw, that's sad. And it is horrible. Like there, there are things where like people fall and you can see them landing on a mattress. Okay. Uh, as like, you know, the, the stunts. Like Anaconda or uh, something. Yeah. And so, that so kind of stuff. This person who I watch Biodome with is mm -hmm. the same person that we rented Theodore Rex mm -hmm. to watch. And we bought a bag full of lemons. <laughs> and we got, got bowls full of lemons cut in half and sat there watching Theodore Rex eating lemons. So when our roommates came home, they would catch us just sitting there watching a horrible movie eating lemons. <laughs> and like that's the there was a point in my life where that was the kind of movie that I enjoyed. Sure. And so, yeah. you know, okay. Take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> well, one of my other favorite movies is Better Off Dead. If that's... Okay, that's that's good. Yeah. I'll give you that one. I'll Forever. give you that one. Yeah. Pee Wee's Big Forever. Adventure. I, I watched it recently, it still holds up. I'm a I'm a big Pee Wee's Big Adventure fan. Oh, I've been that may be probably my favorite to re watch movie. that one for like ages, but yeah. But I will, I will watch the smart ones. Yeah. But not as often as I watch the dumb ones. Godzilla two, uh, Godzilla minus one. Did you see it? No, but I've heard good things. Oh, it was so fun. Oh, it's so fun. What? I really liked it. Why? Why was it fun? Just good so, pacing. Good. Um, really good pacing, and uh, I think that's what I have to say. Say is probably the best thing about it. Just really like edge of the seat. Just like the way they solve the problems too is really cool and uh and it felt i felt very much like it honored the old godzilla so it wasn't too heady it was you know it was a little little campy at moments but just just thrilling it was really fun i was very pleased is uh is it's part is that the one that king kong also is in no like i thought no the king kong fight in it there's there's there is, I think there's a Godzilla versus Kong movie that came out recently or something, but I haven't oh, seen okay. it. But why is it called Godzilla minus one? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not seeing Why it. does anybody <laughs> name anything? Yeah. Uh, I, it might be because it's a throwback. I think it's supposed to be kind of similar to the first one. It might, Interesting. It might have something to do with that. But, but there was Shin Godzilla that came out a few well some years back and that was also great in a different way but um that was called new Go shin is new so it was new godzilla so i think they had to go well we're gonna do one better <laughs> okay. we're gonna go into negatives here <laughs> the uh like there's um i'm trying to think if there's like there, there's some of those big monster movies like that that like Godzilla versus King Kong and whatnot. Part part of the challenge is my wife and I listen to a podcast called How Did This Get Made? Oh, I've heard of that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's all about horrible campy movies. Mm -hmm. Like this last week and she, she didn't want to check it out from the library because she was embarrassed. Um, but uh, we we watched uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. I, I haven't seen it, nor have I read that uh, one. It is, it is I bad. I've heard that. Oh. I've heard that. Oh, it, it it is abrupt. Like the ending <laughs> is nowhere and doesn't like solve any of the problems of any sort. But the the podcast basically listens to or watches all these bad movies and then they um, they recap them and talk about you know what was wrong with them and why they're so bad. Um, and so like one of them was uh, um, that we watched was like you know Mac and Me. Uh, oh yeah. And like those are the oh kind of movies. What is? There's some meme about Mac and Me. What? Oh no, it's from it's from Paul Rudd. 
Like, yes. And yes. 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 Where, <laughs> That's all I know about Mac and me. <laughs> where he was on Conan, and then he would always show up and yeah. play a clip, and it was always <laughs> Mac and yes. me going off the cliff. Yeah. <laughs> um, but those are so like those are the movies we tend to uh, gravitate towards of like just awful uh, tragedies of of expense. Um, mm. But yeah, okay. d you could watch Fifty Shades of Grey for it being horrible, but know it's going to be horrible going in. Like it's one of the worst ones we've seen in a long time because it was just like the plot was so dumb. And they explained that part of it was just like, because it was a uh, Twilight fan fiction. That yeah, right. They had to be careful that they didn't step on the toes of Twilight, and so that <laughs> there was someone from the uh, Twilight movie, some like producer folks were there to make sure they didn't uh, cross any boundaries of like sure. getting too close. So they had to stick to the actual script, and they couldn't change it to be better. Um, I've been yeah. kind of wanting to watch the Twilight movies. I saw the first one. I read the first book. I could not get through the second, but I've sort of been wanting to just watch them. I don't know for their cultural relevance or something. <laughs> no, so, that, wait. that's not, that's too. No, okay. that's not why I want to watch hold them. On, I just want to be curious. Are you, team, are you team Jacob or team... Uh, oh, God, no. Uh, what's, what's his name? Uh, not, not, it's Jacob or... or... Uh, it's Robert Pattinson. That's all I know. <laughs> it's yeah. Jacob or him. It's... Oh man, it's, it's, just, it's Jacob or Cedric Diggory. <laughs> what, what is it, Lauren? Edward. Yeah, Team Edward, Edward or Team okay. Jacob. Edward. See? Yeah, I, I guess it's going to be Edward. But again, I only read one book, mm. and I don't sure, think sure. Jacob was ever um, really. I mean, like the first book was all just about the ro the real the romance forming with Edward. So I don't know. Maybe maybe you know Jacob has a moment later. I've, I've no clue, but yeah. Uh, I don't know which one I am. I don't know what team. You don't, I'm on. You don't know. You haven't chosen. I, I think I'm trying to think of like if I would be on one of those teams. I probably would be. I think you have to be kind of team Edward. But yeah, I don't know. I'll have to. I'll, I'll have to think about it, and uh, I'll get back to you on that one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you'll you'll get back to me on the question you ask me. <laughs> yeah. No. Which which. Uh, which one? You got to pick one by the end of the night. I'll give you that. Um, no. Uh, are there? Are there other? Are you a reader? Um, um, I yes, but um, I I'm <laughs> I'm a listener. I listen to a lot of audiobooks. Okay. Because you know what do I do? I just I draw and what, so I have something in my ears. Audiobooks? Are we talking? Well, I told you I'm. Deal, digging into the David Graeber stuff. So I, I do read a lot of nonfiction. But I also okay. listen to a lot of mysteries. Oh. Uh, I don't I don't do the true crime thing, but I do like mysteries like Ruth Ware and Lucy Foley and yeah. Some somebody in some like really remote estate where there's a storm and no <laughs> way to call out and people are dropping dead I'm, I'm all for that that's fine what about um uh kidlet do you read a lot of kidlet um, um yeah actually <laughs> are we talking about picture books or are we talking yeah. about other stuff because i occasionally will read other stuff i do love ya i used to read ya a lot like almost exclusively and um and I do some, I do read some middle grade, but mostly it's picture books and mostly it's people that I have some kind of connection to. I, I do pick up stuff from people I don't know every once in a while. Like when I got, um, when I got your book, I also picked up the new Max Barnett, uh, Carson Ellis book, but uh, for the uh, most part, it's wait, like, which, I just, which one is that? That's, Oh, what's it called? It's on my shelf. Uh, I could find it. Is that the sunset one where like the cover has the sunset on it? Um, I don't, what is love? Yeah, yeah. Is that it? Hold on. Like I can't go look because I'm tethered. <laughs> with my oh, okay, okay. Don't worry about it. Don't yeah. Worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, 
uh yeah for the most part it's like i just will you know a friend of mine has a book out and i'll get that one because otherwise i'm spending way too much money on kid lift <laughs> yeah. yeah we uh yeah. are you are you the type of person if you go to a bookstore you're buying like three books uh it depends Sometimes I have to really cut myself off and sometimes I'll be like, oh, I'm, I'm like, if, when I've gone to Bologna, for instance, I'm, you know, putting like a dozen books in my suitcase and that's a real problem. <laughs> yeah, a lot of my books are in languages I can't read because the art is just so beautiful. <laughs> like reading them with like the Google Translate app. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's, there's a, a collection of books that I have that, yeah, I have no idea what they're about not a clue and it's it's the mm -hmm. same thing. yeah yeah you just hope yeah. and pray that it's not some like horrible uh tragedy that's on the uh, on the uh the you know the devastation of war on kids and whatever <laughs> <laughs> and you just you, you hope um is there uh how, how big's your collection of uh kidlet stuff um I, that's a good question. I'm looking now. I think I think I don't think I have a hundred books. I don't think we're we're talking a hundred. Maybe oh. maybe if we talk about maybe if we include graphic novels, we might be actually. Oh right, I have a lot of hidden books too. I don't know. It might be a hundred and fifty actually. Yeah, we gotta we gotta build that collection up. Um, have you read? Because you mentioned John. You're saying it's too small. No, See, I'm, just, the thing. I'm just saying you need you need more. We just got to get more. <laughs> no, just... So I, I I am trying to not have more than my shelves can hold. <laughs> <laughs> they go in the center. It's it's difficult. A lot of times I will I will give books away to make room for new books. Oh, and that's okay. Oh, that's, I haven't done that yet. I need to do that at some point. Get get some of the books at least out, or or move them to storage or something of the sort. I don't, um, I don't do storage. I, I lived in you know I lived in a one bedroom apartment in San Francisco, so I got really used to being a bit more judicious about what I take into my home. Yeah. That said, I still have clutter, as I mentioned. <laughs> there are things I can trip over because <laughs> I'm not that judicious about art supplies. <laughs> Is but, there? Yeah. Is there um, thinking of uh, uh, you had mentioned Mac Barnett and whatnot? Mm -hmm. Have Have you read um, John Clausen? Not yeah, yeah, yeah. John Clausen's mm -hmm. uh, "The Rock That Fell from the Sky," or no? What is it? No. Rock in the something in the sky. No. Oh. It, yeah. Yeah, it is the rock that fell from the sky. Um, okay. If you have not read that, I would highly suggest you read that. Okay, I have. I will read that. A top yeah. favorite of mine because of pacing. The whole yeah. book is about pace. And like, if you ever need to explain to someone how to pace a book, it is a, a master course in that. Um, rock that fell from the sky. It is, it is stellar. Um, he, he, I don't even think he read it at the reading that we were at, but mm -hmm. they, uh, I got my hands on it and I've like shared it with so many people and it's just, it's so good. I love, um, of, um, what is it? Bob and Bob. Oh, Sam and Dave. And Sam and Dave. Yeah. I was like, wait, Bob, it's not Bob. Sam and Dave dig a hole. It's just yeah. so brilliant. That is, so that brilliant. Is I'm trying to think of like, there's, there's too many there. Honestly, there's too many good books out there. So I like, know. That's so true. To list, like, there's there are so good. many good artists. Just, well, I won't say that there's a lot of good books, but not good art. <laughs> just, just undercut the whole thing. <laughs> There's a lot of junk out there, and people need to yeah. stop stop making all of this stuff. Right. Um, right, right. Is there, is there a is there a author that you would like to work with at some point in the future? Mm, Mac Burnett. Why? Um, uh, huh? <laughs> so why? Why? He's like I he's, he's a nobody. He's so untalented. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Matt, Matt Barnett, uh, Kirsten Hall, I think, is a, a really amazing writer. Her her language, the use of just the words she chooses are really striking. Um, Kyle McClear, I don't know if I'm saying that right, yeah. is amazing. Um, I don't know. There's just 
there's a lot. Okay, I'm really happy that I got to work with Emma Bland Smith, who wrote Claude, because that is a fantastic book. And yep. she's a fantastic writer. Yeah, it is a, it's a, uh, it's funny because yeah. like we all think these big names, and it's partially like because that's who everybody knows. But then when you get the chance to work with like uh, someone that not everybody knows, you have to go out there and you know shout it from the rooftops. Like, yeah, this is so good, and I want it to have as much credit as these other folks that are out there. Okay, now here's here's the tough question. Mm -hmm. I've I've asked myself and I've had people ask me before and I've asked other folks this. Is there someone that you would like to work on a book with that is famous? So like, you know, the equivalent of oh, I'd um, really like to work on a book with my I, friend uh uh, Catherine worked with Paul McCartney and I'm, I'm a little jealous. Okay. Okay. <laughs> she got to meet Paul McCartney. <laughs> like, who, who, wait, who is, who is he again? Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. There's like that, that Simpsons joke. I don't, I don't need to be telling Simpsons jokes. No one cares. Describe but it. Describe it's it. The, it's when, when he goes to the lawyer, you know, the lawyer's talking about how good he is. He was like, who do you think got Paul McCartney out of wings? And Homer's like, are you crazy? He's the best one. Okay, okay wait, are you, are you implying that you don't like wings? I do like wings. Okay. The point is that Homer did not realize. Yes. That he, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, yes. I, I'm going to make a bold statement here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this might this might ruin my career for my life, but I'm gonna make this. Yeah. Now. Um, yeah. I think I actually like the Wings better than I like the Beatles. The Wings. <laughs> oh, I know. I realized I said the Wings after. No, sorry. After um, that that's fine. That's fine. Do you know <laughs> the Beatles? Like, they had what? Did they only have like six albums or yeah. something? It's like They're crazy. Only seven years or something like yeah that. that's some ridiculously it, that's it they only ran for like seven years. it's crazy how impactful they were in that small time but they sure were and um i do not know enough wings to ever suggest that i might like them better than the beatles well the beatles were foundational because my father played them all the time i i have but i, I do like to... wings I have to add to the great. conversation though that the reason why I like Wings better is it's a nostalgia factor for me. Yeah, that's fair. That totally. I, there was I a, mean, how is it not? Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I was there when it happened. Right. Um, exactly. No, there was a uh, the Wings Greatest Hits album my parents had when I was little, mm -hmm. and they used to play it all the time. And so, like, I know every song on that album, and it's it's one of those things where I just like, uh, I I remember so much about it and like the Beatles I knew but I didn't have that attachment to it and it's not to say mm -hmm. one's better than the other musically but just like I will listen to Wings before I will listen to the Beatles yeah. at this point which is I know that there are some folks out there in the world that that may be heartbreaking to hear um, no, I mean that's fair if that's what you grew up, grew up yeah, on yeah screw them that's my that's my theory <laughs> uh, okay uh, old uh, oh wait Okay, well now we're getting to a weird part of the night. <laughs> I still have to do hair on this guy, but I'll figure it out. Okay. If you could be in any band for, like, I don't know, you can choose what, you know, I was about to say what position you play. Well, that I play guitar, so, so, or I have. I've been oh, okay, in bands. So. Okay, if you could be any in any band right now, what band would you want to be in? Like, right now? Like like they have to be active at this moment. Uh, Gosh. I'm gonna say, or, or is it like I want, I want historically and also now? Huh. Oh, it's so it's hard to pick historic because there are bands that I really like, but then like you you know if they're really well known, you know the drama. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and you're like, oh, maybe I, yeah. maybe I don't want to be in that band. Um. Hmm. If I if I answer this question in the intelligent way, I'd pick somebody who was very successful but had privacy. <laughs> but I can't think of anybody on, off the top of my head like that. That would be like some songwriter that no one ever knows. No one knows <laughs> of. Gosh, who would I want to be in a band with? There, there was a point, much much like 
the Beatles always being played in my house when I was a kid. Heart was played a lot as a kid. Yeah. And I, okay. I really, I don't know if I would pick them, but like they have a special place in my heart. <laughs> heart has a special place in my heart. Um, because I do like rock and roll and that one, like, like that had women in it. <laughs> Not a lot to choose from. Um, hmm. I mean, you just come up with a question, don't you? <laughs> what about, okay, so, well, you're telling me, like, what about current, no, I'll go, I'll go, uh, I'm going to give you some options that you can choose from. Okay. Okay. Try to make it easier on you. Thanks. Um, Free sh sugar, sugar Ray. <laughs> or? <laughs> or, uh, um, <laughs> or, uh, Chumba Wumba. Okay, well, you got to pick one. Yeah, it's going to be Sugar Ray because that's Mark McGrath, right? Yeah. Yeah, and he, and he proved himself as being quite intelligent on um, music, like Rock and Roll Jeopardy on MTV. I remember this. Okay. So, so that is all I know for that reason. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, we can, we can talk about music trivia. Let's see. Uh, uh, I'm going to give you other bands that you have to pick between. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so it's a, I'm trying to pick like, uh, uh, oh, please tell me you're going through your cassette collection. No, 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 I'm not doing that. Um, uh, oh, what's that? What's that band? Oh my God. I can't think of the name of it. Uh, <laughs> it's on the tip of my, uh, tip of my tongue. Is it, uh, Cotton Eye Joe? Who's the band that did that? Oh, I don't, I don't. I know who that was. I know what you're okay. talking about, but I don't okay. know who did that. Okay. We'll change it. Uh, Backstreet Boys. Okay. Or, uh, or uh, 98 Degrees. Backstreet. No, that's. I don't even know. Isn't... Like enough of. Like who is in them? <laughs> I, I, I think. Okay, I think degrees. Backstreet Boys probably had more success. Seths, right? They were like British. They're like popular there what? still, maybe. Actually, Is that right? British. Well, yeah. I don't know. Who, who am I thinking of? Uh, you're probably thinking of uh, uh, what's the one with uh, Liam Gary Barlow and or Harry Styles and. Oh no, that's, that's way too recent. Okay. Uh, oh, what's, what's what was in Backstreet Boys? I don't know. Okay. That one's <laughs> I can't answer this question. That one's a little unfair. Um, <laughs> Okay, uh, uh, shoot. Okay, give me some, give me some, give me, you gotta force me to answer the tough questions. <laughs> this, the tough questions. This, is, this is, uh, Sophie's okay. Choice. Which band Oasis are you Oasis or Blur? What was it? Oasis or oh, Blur? Oh, Blur. Okay. That's not even tough. That's not even tough, That's, okay. No. Well, I mean, but it was, it was, it was the question on everybody's lips at one point in time, so, you know. Yes, no, 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 the, the, the battle between them was. Yeah was was a battle yeah um okay let's see uh i'm not gonna be as hard on you uh okay the cure or um oh fuck. sorry oh i think i might have said something i shouldn't have just said right then <laughs> that's okay i don't know if that came out okay. We're late the um night. yeah uh what is the band's name oh my gosh it's driving me crazy. What's what's the song? No, it's uh, it. Uh, okay, let's just let's say let's just say New Order. That's not what I meant, but oh, let's just here, say them. Here. Here. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah you're same, not giving same. me tough ones. I want ones that are like that. I have to make a real hard decision. Oh wait, you did say like Sophie's Choice. God, then I have to think of bad ones like Cotton Eye Joe, Jumpin' Wumba. Like, um, like uh, okay, uh, okay, um. All right, I thought of one band, but now I have to think of another one that is equally as shameful. Okay, okay. I don't know if this works, but it's related. Sum 41 or Avril Lavigne. Ooh, ooh. Wait a second. Okay. And we, I see there is a question here that's about art that we got. <laughs> um, wait, Sum 41, are they the ones that did like, uh, is, that the, is that the band with the little... Uh, um, 
the little guy with the spiky blonde hair is the lead singer? <laughs> yeah, I guess. So. Is that right, Lauren? <laughs> it's like scene kids, you know, mall punk, okay, that, okay. that whole thing. Uh, I'm gonna go that that group because they. I feel like they're funnier. Okay. Is that probably? But I just Avril Lavigne. I didn't. I didn't understand Avril Lavigne enough to be able to go like, oh yeah, that's the one. Well, she um, dated the 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 singer. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. I know that. Yeah. I think so. Pretty sure. Probably. Probably. Yeah, probably. You know, that's not that I would know yeah. or anything of the sort. Um, <laughs> okay. Oh, she married him. That's what my. Oh, wife she said. married him. Whoa. All right. Okay. Now, now we're yeah. My wife, my wife gets their uh, their. She has a Google alert for anything they do. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Are they still uh, together? <laughs> this, is, this is what we want to know. It's anything that comes up for either of them. Uh, and we can't, <laughs> none of us can name what the guy's name is from Sum 41, but. No. Um, okay. Uh, oh, um, here you go. Okay. Ready? Okay. Puddle of mud <laughs> or creed? Uh -huh. I don't, I cannot tell you what either of these bands have done. I know that whole genre, but that was not, I'm not saying I wasn't into stuff that was adjacent to that genre, but mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know anything about those bands other than their names. Are you being think, a designer right I now? I think Creed, you Creed is a slightly better name than Puddle <laughs> So... All right, so let, let me get back to this question. I see there is a question from... It's actually about art. Uh, <laughs> Marzi Habas underscore author or something of the sort. Uh, what advice do you have uh, for someone just starting out in children's book illustration? Oh, that's, that's not narrow at all, is it? <laughs> and then the follow-up question mm -hmm. that they wrote is, if you had to choose between <laughs> being a backup singer for... Uh, <laughs> for meatloaf or a backup singer for <laughs> that's just like some horrible uh okay uh no uh advice you would give for someone that wants to jump into kid wait i want to know about meatloaf for who oh okay hold on meatloaf or um oh what's it oh uh 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 sammy hagar oh that's a good one you know Oh, I think modern Sammy Hagar. Mo oh, oh, modern. Oh, because you know I can't drive fifty-five. Yeah, I'm like, like yeah, yeah. No, um, I want I want like sort of washed up. Uh, <laughs> what about meatloaf? Liquor. <laughs> meatloaf. I mean, I guess I'm, I guess I'm gonna go with meatloaf. I think. Okay. But like eighty Sammy Hagar was a fun Hagar. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right. That's the thing. Yeah. Like pre pre Van Halen, I, right? I can understand that. I yeah. can get that. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I don't uh, know his body of work, and I, I know. I know. I can't drive fifty five. You know, it's good. I know. That's the yeah. closest as you're, you're gonna get to. Okay. Uh, Advice for yeah. somebody starting in kid lit. Okay, where would I go from here? Um, <laughs> <laughs> like there's just. So many, so many ways to go. Um, clearly, the the beginning of any kid lit journey is going to be building that portfolio, and, mm -hmm. and the portfolio needs to show people like a variety of people at a variety of expressions. It comes back to what we were talking about before where you're saying, you know, a lot of my characters are happy. Um, the stories always, you know, the kid lit stories will start a little happy and they'll end happy, but there's always some emotional journey and people want to see that emotional journey in your portfolio. So while you're thinking, I mean, honestly like you can do anything else like i would say oh you know like for me i want to show that i can do different backgrounds i want to show that i can do different characters like i want to show everything but if you just do very simple flat maybe textural pieces 
you can create something extremely beautiful and elegant and effective if you get that emotion in there. People want to feel. Makes sense. I mean, even even like the other thing that I would I would add is like the concepts don't have to be big. Yeah. You can have a very simple concept that doesn't have. My wife just got a book out of the library that was called. Um, uh, what was the jar book, Lauren? The book about the jar? The kid that tried to open the jar? <laughs> oh, yeah, it was called I Can Open It. That's what it was. And right. it, was, it was a book about a kid who couldn't open a jar and how he thought he couldn't open things. And then he dreamed <laughs> about how he could open things. And, like, that's <laughs> that, – I mean, there was other – That's brilliant. That, but, like, such a fun, simple, easy idea <laughs> – um and yet that's that's the the heart of the whole thing and so like um i don't think it has to be a real complex thing but you got to put in the like you got to make us understand that there is um uh, what do i want to say like there's there's an emotional journey yeah that they go through like even in that case the kid yeah you can you can couldn't... sense the desire just knowing the premise of the yeah, story yeah like the yearning, the the really wanting to to prove themselves and accomplish yeah. something. And it has a very yeah. sweet ending at it, at the end that he he opened up his dad's mouth uh, by giving him a treat. <laughs> oh, you know, like that is sweet. A really smart smart yeah. play uh, mm -hmm. in the story. Um, are, are the I'm trying to think. If there's other like really good advice that I haven't given on here previously that because all i give is good advice um, of course yeah uh i wonder if there's like i mean the, the the main thing that i would say is just perseverance and to not because you're going to get a lot of rejection the especially when you're starting out you have all these ideas and then you find out hey that idea is not a good book or you know, agents aren't writing back to you and you have to get to a point where you start to understand that like, um, it's, it's the long game mm -hmm. and the more time you put in and the more effort you put in and the practice really will pay off in the end, but don't expect it to happen overnight. This is not a, an overnight industry. Um, you know, like the equivalent of, of working in, and you said you worked in editorial before too, right? Um, I, well, I, do currently occasionally work in editorial. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. sometimes those deadlines can be fast and sometimes you got to oh, yeah. quickly. Which, and they, which I enjoy. Yeah. They hunt down <laughs> the best thing about it. Yeah, they hunt <laughs> down people pretty quickly and go like, Hey, we got the job or do you want it? And yeah. you have to respond, you know, sometimes within the hour in order to get that job. Yeah. Uh, Killit doesn't operate that way. Killit is a very sort of slow and meticulous yeah. industry. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so the expectation that you are going to, land an agent or that you got to land an agent today in order mm -hmm. to make it or you got to get a book deal the next day um isn't necessarily how it all works and to or that you're going to make money yeah because like the you know you might get you might land a good book deal my first book deal was pretty pretty decent i mean i'm like five hundred thousand dollars or anything but you know it was it was decent but it's like you get the first point you know, you get the first chunk on signing and then you got to wait some months before you get the yes. next chunk. And then you got to wait some more months before you get the next chunk. And now they're doing this thing where, you know, they're trying to just like hold out one of the payments until publication. And it's like, okay, so two years from now, I might see the rest of that money. Yeah. So there's no, that. But that is a very, very hard harsh reality of, of what we're seeing in the industry right now. Like I've had that yeah. on a couple of books. Uh, yeah. it, it sucks. No one wants that. Everybody wants to be paid when they should be paid. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. That was, that's our I, advice. I do have another piece of advice. Okay. Go for it. Do not underestimate a relationship. I think that is hugely important. It's going to be important for a lot of reasons, but um, your art is only half the battle, really. Um, and may maybe even less than that, because you know you can you you can have amazing art, and the art director has recognized it and and likes it, and is like, okay, well maybe I'll 
bring them on to a project at some point. And then you sit in a folder somewhere or you sit on a, um, you know, your, your postcard is pinned for seven years or however long. Yep. <laughs> um, but they don't necessarily remember you when they're coming to assign something because you're not in their face or you haven't, and I'm not saying like get in their face, but you haven't made your presence known in a while. You haven't befriended somebody who might know them. Mm -hmm. um, like relationships matter. They matter a lot. Um, they matter in industry, in any in industry. And, you know, I, my husband got his job, which has nothing to do with kid lit because he was working with somebody who eventually was like, oh, hey, I'm, you know, I have this position open. Do you want to come? You know, <laughs> like, like it, it really matters. And it's going to matter for your, your peers, your cohort. Like, you know, you're going to, if you don't have friends that are aspiring illustrators or illustrators that are, you know, actively working in the business now, like get some, reach out. You can just show up in comments you know, enough that you can start to DM them. I I have friends that just showed up in my comments enough that I was like, oh yeah, this person's chill. I like this person. Yep. And there, those are the Bear Edwards like, are you out there? Huh? I said is Bear Edwards out there? <laughs> he's, uh, he's someone that showed up in these in these Gabba Doodles and like makes the funniest jokes. And if he lived closer we'd be uh hanging out on a regular basis trying to make each other's like spray milk from our noses. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And I love it. Watching Biodome. Yeah. 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 But but I like I've shared um I've shared work. I, I, I like if I like somebody I'll say I'll talk to another art director and say this is an artist I think you should be watching. You know, like I don't know if everybody does that, but I certainly do that. Yep. And I think like that's a big part of it. That's a huge part of it. Um, they might know who you are, but if you're able to get in front of them at a conference or some kind of event or award show or something or just like become friends with somebody that they're friends with like you're you're going to be in their on their radar a lot more than if you just do the art and put it out there on instagram i, I said to my students uh i don't even know if it was today but at some point here uh and i see one of my students was on um that uh websites you probably need to have a website <laughs> but you probably need to have an Instagram. You probably need to have these things just for promotional purposes, but there is no one that's going to hunt you down. No one's going to find you. You have to present yourself. Mm -hmm. And that, that idea or the, or the, like the notion of like, I will build it uh, or build it. They will come situation yeah. does not happen in an industry like this, that you have to be the type of person that is, willing to get out there and promote yourself. And, uh, you know, there, there's always this hesitation I hear from people of like, well, I don't think I'm ready enough. It's oh, yeah. like, if yeah. you <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> yeah, live by that, then you're never going to be ready. Yeah. You're never going to feel like you're, you're of quality and you're always going to put it off till the next day. And I think people are part of that is people are afraid of rejection. And oh yeah. I, I, I know a lot of people who have said, you know, I just want to be discovered. And, and that's definitely the path of least resistance. It's, it's really nice to just be able to sit back in your comfort zone and do the work and then have somebody come and say, Oh, I like this. Here's a book deal. But the, it's just like what I was talking about with agents before. It's like the person who finds you may not be your ideal person. Yep. And if you can get out and look for your ideal person, you will have a much more rewarding career than if you just wait for something yep. to fall in your lap. Yes. And, and so it becomes, and this is, we are by nature, illustrators are relatively reclusive. Yeah. <laughs> what, what Lauren? Okay. Okay, no, sorry, my, my wife said there was an issue with the feed, but I think it was on her end. Um, she she tried to duck out and not pay attention for a minute. And now she's suffering for it. Oh my goodness! How uh, dare! But what I was what I was gonna say is, um, I the, the idea of like we're reclusive. We are by nature someone that doesn't like artists. Generally, are not the people that want to go out and promote themselves. But yeah, there's no way to to make it as an illustrator unless you actually go out and, and promote yourself. And it doesn't mean you have to go out there and brag and say like, I'm the best thing there ever was. Um, 
but you do need to get out there and put your name out in front of people because again, they're, they're just not going to find you unless you're, you're sort of checking in. And you, you mentioned even like we, uh, you were talking about, um, uh, at some point, I think you mentioned something like mailers and oh, yeah, the post yeah, yeah, like yeah. I've started to do those again. Um, because I've seen agents and I just, uh, art directors say, Hey, I got nothing on my walls. I, I, I need something. That's, I've been thinking about doing it. I, I've, I've actually asked some art directors and they're like, no, 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 I don't want that. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. Right. I've seen, I've seen a mix and it's like, I'm, I'm not going to yeah. miss the opportunity no. though. No, it depends. To, yeah. It totally just depends to get in front on the person. Of people that want it. Yep. And, you know, I understand there's, there's like upsides and downsides to promoting yourself in, in all sorts of manners. But to me, the, the value of putting my name in front of someone yeah a potential job it's not that hard to send out a mailer yeah and it's not that hard to like you know maintain a network of some sort um and the other thing i would i would add into all of this is just go to events yeah like get out there that's it's you have to make that leap of faith it does um it is like i mean events are not going to be available for everyone but there are a lot of online events that you can start to go to and yep. like yeah getting in front of somebody's comments or you know people people like that if you if you just like their thing they're gonna be so happy about it you know yeah. you get that you're, you're riding that wave of dopamine for them <laughs> it's, it's be involved yeah basically be is. involved um, yeah okay now uh back to it uh okay uh, let's see. What's another good one? Ooh, uh, in vogue or salt and pepper? Oh, it's gonna have to be in vogue. Yeah. Why? Oh, free your mind was so badass. Yeah. I don't know. It's, that's a tough one though. That is a tough one though. Um, so what you're saying because, is you don't want a cool eight ball jacket. I mean, <laughs> I do, but I think it's gonna be in vogue. Okay. Okay. You know. Yeah. We, we all. Make... Bring your mind. The rest will follow. <laughs> uh, that one's. I feel like that one's. That one's a, a nice one though. Like both of those are solid. Yeah. Let's see. Huh, there's some was... other. There's some other bad one that's sitting here that I just gotta. I gotta figure out what it is. Uh, Why does it all have to be bad? You can just learn. You can just learn from like what choices you make for good things. <laughs> because. So okay, when you when you play the game, uh, like, would you rather? Uh -huh. right? Are you yeah. the type of person who's like, would you rather have cake or cookies, or would well, you rather? Be, would you, are you going to be the person who goes, would you rather have your eyelids <laughs> missing or? <laughs> okay, know, okay, point made, else? point made, yeah. sure, okay, fair <laughs> enough, fair <laughs> enough. Like, okay, you got to you got to make it uh, something that's really going to affect their life. Uh, long term. <laughs> Speaking of that, it's like okay. Mary date or yeah, kill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like uh, you changed it to date. I did uh, change it to date, <laughs> despite my earlier yeah, slip. We're friendly <laughs> again for everybody. Um, okay. Uh, uh, would you rather? This is one that I've asked people before. Would you rather have a uh, pea-sized hole in both of your, your eyelids? dead center <laughs> or would you rather have quarter size holes in your cheek and then you got to give your reason <laughs> like i i really want to say eyelids because i think they wouldn't be that noticeable for most of your you know like sort of look <laughs> and as any wear glasses, people wouldn't really know. But uh, light would be a problem. Okay. But I might still say that because I think the the I think psychologically it will would be easier to to navigate life with something less visible, which is you know. I say that knowing that that is not a luxury everybody has, but yeah. Okay. Hey, yeah. Now that's not the correct answer. Why is that not the correct answer? Uh, um, the, is there a correct answer? <laughs> yeah. 
The correct okay. answer is the holes in the cheek. Why? Um, Why? Because, okay, so the disadvantage of the holes in the cheek, we'll start with there. Okay. The disadvantage of holes in the cheek are when you lay down on your pillow at night, you get a wet pillow, right? Very straight. Okay. Uh-huh. But it's much easier to put a little cork or something in your cheek to prevent that than it is to put something in your eyelid to prevent light coming in. Because that means when you try to sleep at night, like you either have to have your eyes open or you potentially have holes there because your eyes are closed, but you still have light. You, like there's still gonna be light. You are right? aware that sleep masks are a thing, right? Yeah. Okay, okay great. Okay. Yeah, I know that cool. Gonna, cool, okay, now wait, we're on the same page. Wait a second, no, 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 see, here's the challenge. Okay. What have I gotten myself into? <laughs> Put a sleep mask on, you have a hole in your eyelid. Uh -huh. Guess what that sleep mask is touching? Not Necessarily, there are kinds that do not touch your eyes. Oh, okay. Okay, you win that round. I do. Um, I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Fine. You asked me my choice. I told you it was a well informed choice. <laughs> no way. This is wrong. Uh, <laughs> see, those are the kind of would you rathers I'd rather do. Uh, <laughs> would now, you rather? Would you rather have a puppy or a kitty? Uh, that's not my. That's not my game. <laughs> okay. All right. Fine. Okay. Um, would you rather have a puppy that farts all the time or a kitty who doesn't shut up ever? Mm, 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 okay. Can I, can I ask a question? <laughs> yeah. So, you can. <laughs> how loud is the cat? How stinky are the farts? Uh, very loud, very stinky. Very loud, very stinky. Yeah. Like, like they would keep you up if you were in the same room they so the, the not necessarily the farts the farts would not necessarily keep you up in the same room but the cats would like the 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 loud cat meows would keep you awake like you'd be hard to sleep with that you'd need earplugs i would even venture to say that the fair game is that the, the farts would keep you up as well um but um, I might. Have... No, I'm. I'm telling you, these farts don't. Oh, okay. But you do. You do. Maybe have to leave the house with a certain little dog stuff. Uh, oh, see, that's what I was going to ask: is how much does how much does that carry with you? Oh, uh, it so, some, not a lot. But if someone gets close, you know. Okay. There's a trade-off. Okay, I'm going. <laughs> I'm going with the uh, with the dog farts, uh, and here's my reasoning. Okay. So one. Uh, sleeping with uh, cat meows, that would be very, very hard to deal with just in general. Yeah. Especially um, with the holes in your eyelids. Yes. With, with those yeah. holes, you, you're just going to struggle all yeah. night long. Um, <laughs> yep. You're just going to see that cat standing over you just meowing the whole night. Mm -hmm. um, the dog farts, you're, you're making a false assumption here, which is that I don't already smell <laughs> a little bit like farts. <laughs> 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 so like I'm in the clear. It's true. <laughs> I can, and that, that way I can also just fart whenever I want and go. You know what? I got a dog that farts all night, and uh, that that's what like, you're smelling. Like a really fun you. party song. I got a dog that farts all night. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's not that's I, not the correct tune though. I, it's gonna be a little I, bit more I, like '80s party. I think '90s. A positive, basically, is what I'm saying. Okay. I don't, I don't okay. think it's all a negative. So you're there. saying you can blame the smell on the dog. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, who, all right. Who's to say I don't do that right. already? Right. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah. In this situation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. We'll give we'll give one more. Would you rather here? Let's see. Uh, would you rather? Mm, 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 mm. Oh. Would you rather have elbows that only bent the other direction or knees that only bent the other direction? Knees. So if you sat in your chair, knees. your knees, knees, your legs knees. go up. Okay, knees. why? Um, well, I'm, gonna, I'm going to assume that the legs are just sort of backwards and that the ankle bends the other direction too because if that's the case, you still have decent mob mobility. No. But... I didn't okay. say that. I didn't say that. You didn't it's... say that. I, I did. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you could still have some mobility. Chairs would look weird, for sure. But...
but yeah. with your arms bending the other way, then I'd have to draw behind my back. That seems okay. difficult. So just a career choice, basically. So career just... choice, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there there are people out there that their knees go the other direction. Oh, okay. There's the, the, you can find them on the internet. Go ahead and search. Um, but uh, I I feel like I feel like I would probably go the elbows the other direction. And the reason I say that for me is I feel like I could still like if my arm were bent a different way, I could still paint. It would mean that my arms would have to be up in order to draw. Like my upper arms would have to be up. Like a praying mantis. Yeah, a little bit. But I feel like <laughs> chairs, just the actual like world around me to find chairs that are comfortable would be very, very hard. That's so, true. You know what I mean? Like, let's say you go out to dinner at a restaurant. Well, now you got yeah. your feet in your face the whole time. Yeah. So, like, yeah, that's true. There, there's there, the praying mantis. You could probably still pick up food and get it to your mouth. That that's time. true. And your your elbows have more rotation than your, uh, you know what I mean? Like, uh, um, You've thought of this before. No. Huh. No? no? But. Okay. <laughs> this, this is called, these are the logic puzzles I like. Uh. Ah. Well, um, okay. It, I mean, it's a kind of logic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not like a, like in a logic puzzle. There's like a solution that you're trying to find. It's yeah. Like you know, like it's like you're talking about with um, the other puzzles. Like you want to be right. You know, I think you're saying something like that. I I just I'm saying I don't want the struggle of going out to a restaurant and going. Do you have any chairs that go the other way? That's, that's fair, my fair. that's my but you know like you might have your own like wheelchair kind of situation to be like true you know you just need a ramp okay okay i'm trying to think if there's any other would you rathers that i can come up with on the spot that would be uh somewhat challenging that are in that same vein hmm. um, let's make a okay would you rather would you rather have a cake I'm gonna do. Would you rather have a cake or a cookie? Would you rather have a cake? Uh, my wife just said, "This is what happens when you stay on here uh, this late." I know. Okay. I'm like, it's midnight now. Come on. But <laughs> well, wait, where where are you located right now? You're in. I'm in the East Coast. I'm um, in Baltimore. Okay. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah. Some reason I thought yeah. you're like Midwest. Nope. Um, would you rather have a cake that has a hidden or has a random toenail that's been placed <laughs> in somewhere? Yeah. Like a clipping, or, so it's not big, but yeah. just okay. one in there. And yeah. you don't know where it is, and you don't know whether you're going to bite it or not. Okay. So, or would you rather have to eat a cookie from a tray that someone licked uh, one, one of the cookies, but they recently had a cold? So it's not just oh. that they licked them. It's, there's a chance you might get a cold from it. Do Toenail? I, I know who the person is. Um, we'll go with, with your with your dad. <laughs> How weird! <laughs> I was like, it can be a loved one, but it can't be like so loved that you're like, I do anything for them. Like a dad's toenail is probably like maybe a little too far, and so that's why I'm. That's why I'm dad. So it's my dad licked the cookie, mm -hmm. and it's my dad's yes. toenail. And like, there's only one toenail. There's only one like cookie. So my chances of not getting it are good. Well, yeah. Okay. So like, it's a cake. It's a standard size cake, or it's yeah. a, let's say it's a a dozen cookies. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's fair. Uh, I think I think I'd probably go with the cookies. I'm gonna rely on my uh, I'm gonna rely on my uh, immune system to pull me through. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think so. But also, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that chance. <laughs> and my dad already licks all the cookies anyway. So like, <laughs> been doing that for years. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> my dad used to make tortilla chips, like nachos, where he would individually take a tortilla and put like a chip and put bean dip on it and then cheese and he'd lay them all out on a sheet pan he'd put them in the oven so that each chip was the perfect nacho bite oh that's like uh chilies 
If you ever go to Chili's and you get nachos, sometimes they do that where it's like every chip is individual. They're not piled up. Oh, I don't know about this. It's okay. Uh, you never it was been to Chili's? before Chili's. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I went. I, I've, I've been in like high school and stuff. Yeah. But yeah. They, yeah. I remember getting nachos from them one time and I was like, what is this? Because I'm so used to the pile. Right. Of yeah. Nachos. And this was like, here's a chip and it has all the ingredients on it and it's perfect. And then here's another chip to the side. They're not touching each other of any sort. Whereas yeah. most nachos, it's like, here's a bunch of chips together and we threw a bunch of stuff on top. Um, yeah. That is, that is my, my mother used to make sandwiches for herself and she would arrange it so every bite had the same ingredients in it. So like if there was tomato, every bite had to have tomato in it. And so she would like balance risk. Happy. What happened? Yeah. I mean, it makes sense, but she also, my mother. Okay, I'm going to go out with my mother for a second. You got really digit, like really weird. Like the audio is really weird right now. Oh, uh, from my end? Yeah. But so you can still hear me. It's garbled, yeah. But I can oh, still hear you. Interesting. Okay. Well, I'm at, I'm at a point where I can probably stop too, so I don't. Um, but I was going to say, my mother once had the company coming over and she forced me my dad and I to have our dinner over the kitchen sink so that no crumbs would go anywhere. That's, that <laughs> is quintessentially my mother. Um, yeah. All right. My stepmom threw my shoes away once cause I didn't put them away. <laughs> were they good shoes? Yeah, they were perfectly fine. Found them in the yeah. waste basket. I was like, hmm, okay, I guess I should put these away. <laughs> Don't <laughs> leave them out on the stairs. <laughs> yeah. All right. My wife is telling me that my voice is also jumbled. Yeah. Okay. Through all her end. So, I uh, are you? I'm watching. Have you been drawing for the last little bit, or are you just sort of? I I doodled here and there. Okay. I I actually gabbed and doodled for a bit. (laughs) I'm at a point where I like I feel like if I touch this too much, I'm I'm gonna ruin it. So I might actually just say, that's it for the night. Unless you're like. You got some other stuff to throw at me. Um, no, no, no. I'm, I'm. It's, it's my bedtime. Okay, <laughs> okay good, good. Um, you not only have you been the, uh, are you a Gavin dude, which is someone who hangs out for the full four hours? <laughs> you hung out past that. You've done four hours and fifteen minutes. Oh wow! I, know. I didn't realize. I, I, I wasn't watching the clock. I was just like, whoa! It's, it's we've been, we've been doing this yeah. for a while. <laughs> yeah, no, no. You made it. You made it to the weird section. The weird. Where we, Dude, I think we had hit the weird section really early on. <laughs> we had a battle. It's, it's uh, the the late nights is when uh, I start to get, especially when like the guest leaves. That's when I uh, like if there's someone um, says like, oh, I gotta check out early or whatever. That's when I start like tearing down my wife, <laughs> and making fun of her, and making fun of myself and people that I know and all, all that right. stuff. So. I'm glad I could uh, give them all a reprieve yes, yeah. for one night only. <laughs> Wait, let me get one in there real quick. My wife, real dumb dumb. Um, <laughs> and we'll, we'll leave it at that. Um, okay. Uh, this has been a pleasure tonight. Yeah, yeah likewise. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Do you want to say your, your husband's a dumb dumb? It's, now's the chance. No, I love him. That doesn't mean I don't love my wife. She's just like you know, I love. I don't know about you. I, lo- I love my partner. Like I, I do. <laughs> well, I say it in a different way. You say that people that they're bees. I say my wife. I no, I I say that mine is a weirdo, but but he is right. a fantastic weirdo. <laughs> I really do like him a lot. There you go. Uh, all right, this has been wonderful. Uh, I've, I've laughed a lot and enjoyed the night uh, more Same. than I ever could. Uh, and I got so much drawing done. <laughs> and now you know also that you're not afraid to have your dad lick your food. Uh, you're even it's willing probably to happened it. before. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And now uh, if your husband does listen to this, I require him to make you a cake at some point for your birthday. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Can't wait to see your Good night, everybody.
Yep. Good night. Thanks for sticking around. All right. Uh, <laughs> All right.